What up, folks? This is not your regular broadcast channel or your regular broadcast show. This is Pirate Radio Network taking over just for the night. Something to do. Um, hey, you know, I thought about it and uh, it's the holidays and we need each other more than uh, a lot of us like to admit and think. So scramjet, just random, thrown together. You know, figured I'd call my buddy Webb on here. Thank you guys for getting on, following us. You know, we don't have any format tonight, so that'll be awesome. But we're going to talk about what? What's up, Terrell? We're going to talk about guns. Sure. Because sure. we're gun people. Uh, we're going to talk about cars uh, because yeah. we're car people. We won't talk about trains because trains are for losers. And Dean's uh, not here. <laughs> no, he just got in. What's up, Dean? Oh, okay. Dean what's <laughs> That's up? why I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Yee. Oh, I got to pop probably- all the comments. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there he is. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So what have you been up to today? Nothing much, man. You know, usual daily Monday grind, um, making parts for airplanes and making sure the parts for airplanes are well suited for use. Yeah, there we go. Guns, cars, hookers, and blow. Yeah. The two may be in my former life. Not really, but um, yeah. I th- me and Felix basically met through guns. Yeah, mostly the Air yeah. Force, but we started shooting yeah. together in IDPA and then a few classes up in South Dakota. Yeah, compared to shooting and some classes, and then we uh, smoked uh, a whole hog together because our commander profiled us because we were from the <laughs> South. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the only stipulation I added to it, trying to flex my little, my little NCO is we had it was acquired southern rule that you had beer when you uh smoked absolutely so we were supplied um case of beer rolled our cars in the back of the squad building and we smoked a hog all night that was right behind my old metals tech shop Um, yeah that was in in the back part of sheet metal that was in the uh the good old days when uh, oh you when you you know when you did your mission and your turns and you came back and it was a Friday afternoon, um, your commander would roll in with a keg of beer and say, "Y'all be careful tonight." <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It was it, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I joined late, but you know, two thousand. Hey Jerry, I want to answer Jerry. Yeah, we're both vets. Uh, yep. I'm retired Air Force. He is Air Force also, and yeah, we're both vets. Both, uh, he's sheet metal. I'm metals tech. We were sister shops in the Air Force. Um, they do no more drilling, you know, beat to fit, beat to fit, paint to match. And we did machining, welding, fabricating, all the CNC crazy stuff. But Vietnam, Vietnam. uh, lots of my family members in Vietnam. Talk to that. Yep. Toast. Couple door gunners. Yeah, not shots right now. <laughs> yeah, close. Couple door gunners. Uh, got one of my uncles has leg blown off. Another guy. Uh, I was very fortunate to make it back. I had three helicopter crashes. That was my wow. Grandma. Yeah, that'd be the guy. Be like, uh, <laughs> how many crashes was, you got? <laughs> put it this way, they did not want him anywhere. They didn't want him on the ship after a second one. <laughs> one like that's unlucky two like hold up now nah you ain't getting on my then three they like, like okay it's the end of your tour you're, you're just gonna go back you're a little <laughs> unlucky so well he's lucky because he lived every all three but it's just like everyone else with him is just like you're just staring at him the whole flight yeah, <laughs> yeah not, unfortunately not everyone on his three crashes also so um, yeah, well, it's a helicopter. Cool. You're flying in something that's built to try to crash itself. So, yeah, yeah I worked those sun bitches, and you know, I got to work uh, Hueys up in North Dakota. They had a rescue squadron, and they were old Vietnam Hueys, and uh, they were kind of cool because they were actually piloted by a couple old Vietnam vets and some older guys. That, and I'm saying older guys because everyone was civilian, and these all dudes are white hair. And they were the shit. We'd uh, go there and work on their uh, helicopters for them. 
and then you would need to go pick something up from Grand Forks, and you would actually go. Uh, oh, he's a door gunner. And then we'd go uh, pick something up, and he'd go get yeah, your uh, what was it? Man, brave man. It was your fuel jacket, and you'd strap up into the back of the Huey, and it would fly a map of the Earth from Minot to yep. Grand Forks, <laughs> trying to scare you. But I had a damn good time, and uh, yeah, I did a lot of good work for those guys. But they would rescue. Uh, they would work with the cops. Well, no, actually, it's not law enforcement. They would work with the missile police yeah. out in the missile fields. And pretty much when it was too snowy to drive out, that was their transport in and out and within anything or any other rescue situation. So, yeah, it was pretty fun. And then, of course, when you're deployed doing our job, you work whatever's out there. And the Army has yep. some shit. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was always like you go work with the Army stuff. You're like, you guys fly this? <laughs> <laughs> my son said tour in turkey you know i went there for a just nice little cruise i mean yeah we war zone 60 miles from syria but i mean it was it was it was supposed to be cake it was supposed to be a two-man shop transient aircraft only yeah and we had an army we had three army helicopter squadrons rotate through when we were there and talking about you know guy coming from air force maintenance the the those guys get it done, and, and when we say in the Air Force, a uh, double bubble and duct tape, that yeah. means we have to get out and off the ground like quickly. These guys, that's literally in their toolbox. That's what <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> no, they do. The, the guys do great maintenance with what the resources they have. And I remember think, one of the Army guys looked at my toolbox when I was depot, and he looked. It was like he walked into like the best snap on craftsman. He was like. <laughs> Are these for you? Like, is this for your whole team? I'm like, no, this yeah. is mine. And he's like, just for you? <laughs> yeah, we all get one. We have, we all get one. Yeah, no, that was pretty cool. So no, yeah, we're we're vets. Uh, different era, but you know, same same passion. Um, and you know, just keeping on, keeping it, keeping it going. Just like um, a lot of guys probably thought the generation coming behind them wasn't going to be able to hold up. We shall see. There, there, yeah. I, I can say every male member of my family was in the armed forces. Uh, lots of Air Force, lots of Army. Um, my uncle was 82nd, jumped into freaking Kuwait. Uh, one of my other uncles, 27 years, was a DI, Arctic Warfare, Bosnia. Uh, my grandfather was uh, Korean War. Um, my other grandfather was B-52s from 19, like the day they came out. Is actually stationed at Ellsworth, which is pretty cool. I have family up there, which is cool that I got stationed there. But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, just trying to carry on kind of the legacy of my myself maintainer. Um, that that was a a blast and getting the mission done first. And uh, it's, it, it was quite a chore trying to bring up this pseudo new generation, so to speak. Yeah, uh, with some of the new guys from tech school. I mean, trying to impart some wisdom into them and some work ethic. You know, not that they didn't have it, but um, yeah, Dean was a Navy. Jennifer, yeah, I went to tech school with those uh, Marine Corps guys. I went to Pensacola, and oh yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. I remember many a times that I would form up our element before we left, and the Marines would be getting yelled at, and we'd have to wait. And be standing there while they're getting yelled at, and the TI or whoever he was would come walk over to us and be like, "Hey man, just stay here for a minute. And I'm gonna use you guys for something." And he stand there, and he goes, "You guys can all become fucking grunts." <laughs> he start yelling and pointing. He goes, "You want to bump fucking hammer working on your planes? You know, you get your shit together." And we like, and I look over and I look at everybody. I'm like, "Hey, you can all fucking be a marine." So you want to feel out of freaking tech school <laughs> and yeah. go through that shit? Or do you want to fucking fl straighten up a fly right? I no. got one story almost exactly like that. Uh, our tech school at the time was Aberdeen Proving Ground, which at the time was Army Ordnance Tech School. Oh, Aberdeen. And, I used to live out there yep. right in Maryland. Yep. And uh, Army Ordnance Corp, we had probably a thousand Army and 500 Marines right at the that big machining tech school yep. and then 70 air force in different stages of classes. So we were, you know, they, they gave us a little bit more of a leash there, which was kind of weird. Um, you know, Marines and army were always disciplined, always marching everywhere. Um, but and I was so damn early, dude, 
You know, my alarm oh, we, was. We would go, beat him. We would beat him. We would beat him. My alarm would go off at like, you know, 5 30, and you'd get up, take a shower, and you open your window in Florida, and you just hear, you know, running and wrecking, yelling, and you're like, what the <laughs> like, come on, dude. Like, shit. You're, you live on a boat. Like, really? <laughs> like, it's, it's funny. But yeah, Pens- Pensacola was fun because, like you said, we had, when I got there, I think there were maybe a hundred something Air Force personnel, yeah. period. It's from the commander down to our instructors yeah. and us. We had one floor of a three story building. We we're at the top. And you would walk up the floor and they had that plastic neoprene, whatever uh, stairs. And you would come when you come to our level, then it was almost like you walked in. It's almost, well, it's like you walked into heaven because it was actually yeah. clean. And <laughs> yeah, we had our own, like, you'd come upstairs and they're like, can we use your phones? We're like, get off my deck, Marine. And you'd say that with all, you know, like backing up a little bit because they usually be drunk. <laughs> just like, I'm just trying to survive, son. But yeah, we it was fun. We had all kind of ribbon back and forth. But that truly, the majority of my friends beside, you know, you and everything else, I have way more Marine buddies because of my job and yep. what else and whatnot. So yeah, they're very kindred spirits. Those guys are pretty freaking cool. So I got yeah, I got to uh, experience a lot of Navy and Marine maintainers, air air framers, so to speak. Um, yeah. Stationed at Eglin on the F thirty five, we had you know the F thirty five A, Bs, and Cs. So you know Air Force Marines and, and and Navy, and basically they brought those squadrons there to start off and get delivered. And we we were trying to influence the Navy and Marines in, in our Air Force maintenance ways because we do kind of have it figured out. It's kind of what we do is maintain combat aircraft every single day. You know, so we did rub off on a decent bit. They were they were really, um, really appreciative of it, you know, because certain things that they, they just didn't have a handle on. Um, but Jerry, I got to be friends with start, a lot of them. Sorry to cut you off there, Webb. Jerry, we don't have a call-in number. This is uh, literally... Um, when Monday Night Mayhem call, called off their show tonight because um, I believe Lunchbox got stuck in the woods. I think they're still out there looking for him. Just joking. <laughs> <laughs> someone, yeah, crack, someone crack open a spam can and they'll find him um, or, you know, walk on the grass. But no, no, we don't have a call in number, unfortunately, on this. I just wanted to get on here because. I saw the outreach of people that, you know, we're going to miss the show. And I figured we we can kind of get something together, get some bets together talking. You know, like I said, it is the holidays. It is kind of crazy. Like I had a pretty decent day. You know, I was rocking my Hawaiian shirt today, um, rolling around, went and talked to some wholesalers. Uh, things have been kind of crazy since the election. So people are buying, but it's just a little bit different until I guess everyone it's almost like you stunned the alligator everyone's just kind of still there moving around but not really doing much but um no went and uh yeah saw a bunch of our wholesalers and getting ready for Thanksgiving I have a couple turkeys on brine I was working on a little uh, I did some video of it and I'm gonna have my pod my podcast pop back up this Friday and it'll be um Actually, I might do it on thir- uh, launch it on Thursday because it'll be done. But it'll be like a turkey, little turkey brine clinic or how to make a moist turkey. Uh, <clears throat> so got that. I'm going to make uh, greens, make some collard greens and pull out some ham hocks, put in that and some bacon. And also I'm going to make my smoked mac and cheese. So, yeah, I'm, I'm fully prepared because I ordered uh, pellets through Bear, Bear Mountain and I ordered them online. Mm-hmm. Nice. And I got about I got four bags of oak, two bags of pecan. So I'm gonna what smoke. Was your, what was huh? your favorite again? My favorite is oak. The okay. reason the reason I like oak is uh, even though we're beef, beef and stuff like that, harsher meat, beef pretty much, wild yeah. game. Yeah. People strong, like hickory. Stronger taste. You get that stronger taste, but hickory yeah. and uh, mesquite aren't bad. And I used to use them a long time ago. But when I started using um, oak, I learned that it doesn't ever over smoke. It's always yeah. subtle. But yep. when you're smoking log like I do, I can sit there and it lets me use less charcoal, you know, lump charcoal. And I sit there and it gets a good fire, but it also makes good a good charcoal bed. Yep. And I can smoke a brisket and it's just not overpowered. 
You know, even when I put mesquite or or like I'll throw a log of mesquite or a couple logs of, uh, you know, uh, sorry, I'm forgetting hickory on there. And I would use hickory more than mesquite. I just I'm used to that subtle smoke flavor, you know, and it goes well with how I cook with the seasoning. Yeah. You know, because I like traditionally smoking and yeah, I've used cherry and stuff like that. I love apple for pork, fish. I'll use yes. apple, my favorite yeah. oak. Then I'll go probably to apple and pecan in that order. Though no, those are the woods I use because, like I said, I can smoke with them all day long. Yeah. And now, pecan's not native to you guys up there, is it? Anyone? No, pe- pecan's not native, but they have oak here, and you just yeah. got to know yeah. where to find it. I've uh, got when- pecan. All, I grew up on a pecan orchard. My father-in-law down the street had a bunch down during the hurricanes recently. I have. And that's what I was about to say. When I was home in New Orleans. Pecan. Yeah. When I was home in New Orleans, I literally need to find someone with a semi truck. They need to drive down to New Orleans and just take all like some. There was a tree I saw, and if you ever been in Louisiana, these oak trees. You want pecan? I'll get these, you pecan. These oak trees have like massive trunks, like five, six foot diameter trunks, and one of these things were cut up in three, bucked up in three sections, a trunk, and you a Volkswagen VW easy, all three sections. Yeah. And I'm yep. like, man. I'm like, if I can get someone to bring that, I don't think TSA will let me bring that back on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> we got to worry about ag rules too, between going state to state. I don't know about mailing stuff. You know what I mean? Fuck um, I, yeah, I know. Hey, well, <laughs> Dean, so Dean said he wants to try one of the dry fryer. I actually did that yesterday. Um, I got the Charbro big, easy uh, oil of fryer. Um, I did a injectable. I actually sounds took like a, witchcraft, personally, but anyway, it does. It, it, hey, man, I was not a believer, uh, it, but I tried it at a friend's house and it was pretty good. I'm usually a fried turkey. I've been frying turkey for a decade. Absolutely, any kind of right. oak. I use post oak, red oak, white oak. Uh, just it has to be at least uh, even live oak, but it has to be dried out. <laughs> has to be seasoned. Has to be. Has, yeah. to, be, has to be seasoned. Yeah, you know, Need, uh, yeah, it depends on wh- what kind of cuts you have of your. And I believe up here it's white oak in Louisiana. It's red oak, but up here it's like white oak and post oak. Oh, you got um, live, you got live oak um, down in Louisiana for sure. Yeah, they got live oak down there. But yeah. yeah, no, no, Dean. No, let me let me finish on this uh, oil list though. I'm telling you, um, an unnamed injectable Creole butter flavor. I took that and I mixed in some of the BBQ sauce, beer BBQ sauce. Mustard drop because it just wasn't up to my taste. So I whipped it up in there and injected that bad boy with the, almost the entire bottle mixed in. Um, the only reason I didn't put it on the outside is because it's got uh, sugar in it. And this is kind of like a, a roasting thing. You don't want to burn your skin or whatever. Yep. You know, it's, it's kind of, it's going to char it. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be bad. Um, but yeah, it's, it's 15 pound turkey. I literally popped it in there. We left and went with family photos. I got home. The um, Thermal Pro was beeping. It was 167 degrees. Yeah. I timed it perfectly. Popped it out, put it in the pan, covered it in full, rolled to the in-law's house, opened it up, started cutting it, still steaming, and juicy as all get out. I'm, I'm really impressed with it. You know, it's not going to take 45 minutes or an hour like a deep fryer would, but uh, it, it took two hours and 45 minutes. But it's not six hours in an oven either. So yeah, yo, Jen. Uh, yeah. So I don't have a proprietary for meat because beer BBQ goes on everything. I've had it literally. My neighbor up the way. Um, I walk in his gar- walk in his living room and it looks like I think he probably has more animals than zoos <laughs> get on his walls. Yeah. The dude has a giraffe. That's all I'm gonna say. His oh giraffe. yeah. Tell me about that. He he has. And a couple times he's cleaned his freezers out and because he went out hunting or got a cow or something like that. And he goes, oh, you want some meat? And I'm like, yep. And so I've cut I've cooked stuff when I had to look at the package. I had to Google it. <laughs> I'm like, uh, oh, that's what that is. And let's make some burgers out of that X Z R O N animal. You know, I the antelope. Something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something. Something crazy, but no, it goes on. Got some uh, wild rhino. What is this? Is extinct. Yeah. <laughs> some, what is it like the white, the white African rhino? Yeah, this is pure Cambodian, man. Pure Cambodian meat. <laughs> he got Cambodian breast milk. <laughs> we started watching Dave Chappelle again the other night. That's what yeah. me and I was 
touching on that. But no, uh, so I've had it on uh, pheasant. I've had it on duck. Oh, yeah. I've had it on deer. I've had it on uh, antelope. I've had it on elk. Um, uh, freaking Xanadu, whatever the frick that thing is called. Yeah. Um, no dinosaur meat, but I've done dinosaur beef beef ribs. I've done dino ribs, and all I do is because barbecue is a compliment. It's a compliment to everything, you know. You put on it, like even when I do my prime rib, I add salt, rosemary, and whatnot because barbecue doesn't need to be everything. It just needs to help you, you know, add that extra little flavor. You can still cook. I still want you to cook. I still want you to blend. I've blended my stuff with honey pepper or lemon pepper. I've blended my stuff with uh zatarans you name it you know and i've talked about you with this before you know i'm you know been a buddy for a while uh love your stuff obviously um you know and i felt a little guilty sometimes like hey man i didn't exactly use all your ingredients in this whole thing you're like no no exactly you want you want people to cook and experiment and use this as an ingredient if you if it's a you know a your primary ingredient, great. If it, if it, you know, accents the dish and uh, try it with everything. I mean, my gosh, I, the bacon you showed me one day when you were developing the yeah. mustard up, man, just yeah. sprinkle on bacon. I've done that. My kids will Cooking not eat citizenship. It. Yeah, yeah, you can do that, <laughs> but uh, I believe that's you have to be on the other side of the wall, and um, the cartels. That's what they work on. S SBRs, sweet baby race. Oh, I thought you meant SBRs. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, I was just kidding, just kidding. Sweet baby race. <laughs> okay, so, so you say SBR to me, it means a different thing to you. I know. Oh yeah, yeah. We're talking in code, man. They got money. I, I ain't trying to get sweet up here. Be like, sorry, sorry, sorry. I need hey, barbecue sauce lawyers at my doorstep. Here, here's another thing. I love you. I love all your sauces. There's one that they have. It's the Sweet Vidalia. I know. Trust me. I have a video it's a good, here. It's a, good, it's a good dipping sauce. I have a Actually. video here. Um, I thought it was pretty funny. When I, uh, I'll see if I can, I can uh, get it on here. But when I was at my mom's house, of course, you're walking into the cupboards and looking around, and my mom has a bottle <laughs> of Sweet Baby. Now she has a whole shelf of mine. Mind you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. This was literally She's tucked a away. Dinner. Yeah. Tucked, tucked away in the corner in the back. And I see the top and I'm like, oh, God. And I'm like, perfect time to make a video. <laughs> 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 and I just walked in and I'm like, walking in and I'm like, oh, shit. I'm said, I need another mom. <laughs> I don't know if I can find it. It was a. It was a hot minute ago, but I thought it was pretty funny. She had that in there. But that was a. Um, Hers is uh like this teriyaki style or whatever. Oh, some wild, yeah, yeah, some yeah. Wild and I'm good because yeah. I'm never going there. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, I don't want a bunch of I don't want a bunch of crazy skews and whatnot. You know, yeah. I'm trying to get people to buy what I have now. Yeah, you gotta get the <laughs> so, main line going, man. You know, I gotta get my main line going. I, I so, think you have branched out appropriately. The the mustard yeah. is a hit. You know. I liked it so much, you know. I ordered that two pound bag. I mean, yeah, I, that's the on. best deal right there, man. It's going on for stuff. Oh, um, I do need to make an announcement. Um, yeah. For those who have ordered our uh, beer BBQ Hawaiian shirt, and those who have not ordered it, we have approximately one, two, three, four, five, six days to sell twenty shirts. <laughs> so. Um, don't look like that might happen. I do have faith, but I'm retired military and I am suspect. Um, so, so whoever has ordered it, um, we will either give you a refund or work something out. So whoever ordered it, uh, we will, I will be contacting you guys and we will trust me, bro. I want one too, bro. I don't I want my logo on it, but you know, 25, 25 people voted. Just saying. I know, yeah, yeah. A little maddening. Um, trying to, you know, but that bad, bad, sweet baby raised out of Hawaiian shirt. Oh, Everybody oh, it's, 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 it's easy to click a button to vote for one, but it ain't easy to click the buy now button. You know, that is true. Especially American-made shirt. I'm just giving you guys shit. Love you all. Oh, I was happy about that. 
<laughs> I'm an idiot. I pay, uh, you know, I, I I like flannels. Well, you don't get to wear flannels much down here. Them it's Dixons? Really, yeah, I'm, I dig it, the Dixons. Um, they, you know, uh, there's someone, there's someone uh, biting in on their, uh, on their swag. Uh, oh, there's quite a few, I'm sure. Well, no, it was, uh, I was, for some reason, I was on either Grunt Style or one of those t-shirt companies. But it's either like Gun Style or <laughs> Black Rifle, one of those two. But they make those shirts. I mean, looks just like the Dixon shirts. Well, I mean, they, I mean, dude, yeah, no, they're they're look, coming back a little bit. You know, it used no, to be kind of grungy, just like the Dixon kinda, shirts. It used to be kind of like uh, you know, kind of cholo style, or whatever. But no, I, I mean, I, I I dig them. I got a, yeah. a few of them. Um, you know, I got one they just did with the Moon Eyes Speed Shop. Yeah, if everybody's old enough to remember that. I, you know, that's the old '60s, '70s hot rod shop back in California. It's like yellow and gray and black. It's a beautiful piece. I've got one actually that's called the uh, Two Two Three. It is all the colors of a um, M855. Is that the uh, the steel core penetrator? Yep, green tip. Yeah. Green tip. It's uh, like a yellow, a pale yellow kind of brass. A little bit of brownish and like a green tip, and it looked yep. like you look at it, you're like, if you know what you're looking at, you're like, that's all the colors of a M855. So I, I just like that, you know. What I mean? Hey Terrell, it's all good, brother. If you guys do it, that'd be cool. I just letting you guys know. So when if it disappears, yeah. I just wanted to let you know before it did disappear. I'm gonna keep it on there until the last minute. The company she she extended it a few weeks and I've been pushing it, but you know, it is the holidays and I do understand because people have a lot of shit going on. Um, I got to talk to the company and see a more uh, robust schedule, you know, but you guys know what I want to do. It's one of those things. Um, Just trying to get it out there and it's fun. Like today I walked around, it was 40 something damn degrees out. I went to Sam's, I went to Safeway. And literally everywhere I went, everyone was smiling. Everyone was like, I wish your shirt brought the sunshine, you know? (laughs) And yeah, I was like, yeah, same here. I was cold as shit. Well, I had a shirt on under it, but cold as shit, but manageable. But it was good. It, you know, it brought people, you know, people saw me across the store. They were just, it's a different vibe when you walk in the room with a Hawaiian shirt on, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So I like it. I think it'd be cool and it'll happen. We we oh call them our party God. shirts, man. Like uh, yeah. it's funny. Um, as actually a guy we were trying to get on here tonight. One of our friends, Lucas. We're we're amateur drifters. We yeah. do sli- slidey stuff because we're old and dumb. Yeah. Um, you know, it's drifting just so- for all the older people out here. Drifting is when you take a car and you slide it sideways, like the Duke's a hazard. Yeah. It's it's not a time sport. It's a judge sport, but we actually don't do it for sport. We do it for fun. We try to kind of touch each other's doors without wrecking. But, I mean, when we get out there, it's party time. We're just having, trying to have fun with our friends. It's camaraderie. So we wear our party shirts, and usually it's a stupid Hawaiian shirt, and I wanted a Hawaiian shirt from BBQ Sauce to wear while I was drifting. So that's why I had the motivation. And I advertised for my boy, of course, and, you know, rock and roll. One second, I'm gonna pull up a video of Mr. Also, that Uncle Sai, yes, something we shall not speak of online for fear what? of reaction. Oh, <laughs> big <laughs> <laughs> the redacted boys. <laughs> Show some people some uh, drifting here in a second. I'm a right wing activist. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up, I'm gonna screen share what oh, web joke. what web does. Oh, who's this? I know that guy. Oh, there we are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, how this is a fair a parody video. He uh, yeah, it's a parody video. He Just like the video. food video I put on. With him. Gives kind of a perspective from the lead car, but you need a more of an aerial shot to see exactly what's going on. Eh, you can kind of get it there. 
pretty much um they're in the pocket of big tire. <laughs> yeah. And big oil. Actually, and, it's, it's, it's and not big, that bad. And big paint job and big body work. <laughs> it's not that bad. Dude, I watched a dude tear up a brand new set of yokes in like an le- less than half an hour. Well, he uh, didn't have the proper alignment or pressures. There's Lucas right there and his yeah. Mark III. It's, it's, it's literally the, the, the art of being in control and out of control at the same time. It's, it's a, yeah. When you get it dialed into just to that level and you can hold it with the back end out and you're literally looking out your side window to steer – Either side, your driver or your passenger side, and you're holding it there, and you you can figure out what you're doing. That right there is kind of a moment of bliss. You know, it might yeah. seem stupid. It might, you know, some there are some people that take it to extremes, and you know, they try to do stupid stuff on the street. You know, which I don't advocate. I have plenty of tracks around me. I'm fortunate, but uh, it's barbecue sauce and VRS do not advocate street racing of <laughs> any sort or manner. There we go, or anything or else like that, like or purchasing of SDRs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I've, no, I've done all I kinds did, of other stuff. Only time I've ever done it, so. we had an airman come in Oklahoma, Oklahoma, and, Oklahoma, and yeah. hey, you have your sound through your computer, don't you? I can Me? hear myself. Yeah. Uh, no, I have it through my headphones. Mm. But hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you fine. But anyway, um, this kid brought a car in, a par- parted car in. Long story short, he get we get it built out. And he was talking about how he was all a drifter and this and that. And this kid from inside the stall, kicking the jacks away from the car, gets in. Like, this car had padding on the doors and the center console for driver and passenger, five part harness. So I get in there, put my helmet on. I'm kind of leaning over, looking at him talking. And he turns it on. And the car sounded amazing because we had it on. We already, um, we already, well, hey, hey, redneck pimp. This isn't a, this isn't uh, Monday Night Mayhem. This is uh, Scramjet. <laughs> but uh, he launches this car. Like, he gets in, turns it on, starts revving it up. And I'm like, you know, you you do that. Your car has been apart for months. And he's doing that. And I'm just expecting him to kick it in first and just kind of ease out the garage. This dude straight up high rev. Clutch and clutch drops. Shoots <laughs> out of the door. It's... I don't know. My brain went. Arr! We get through the door as soon as the ass and his car got outside. It went immediately sideways down this little alley, and we're just going side to side. And I'm looking out the side of my, like he said, out the side of my window, out the window at the road where we should be going straight. <laughs> and I'm holding on. And this dude went around the park, went around the little bit industrial park we were in. And then he hit the road and he kind of, and it's still an industrial area, and he's going up. And I'm like, oh, by the way, uh, you don't want to go too much farther. There's a sheriff's sub- substation up there. Right there. So he stops and does a couple donuts, and then comes back. <laughs> and like, I was like, well, for one, that was awesome. For two, I will never do that in one of my fucking cars because it was like the most violent thing besides crash derby, it felt like. And then when we got back, I don't think they were a brand new set of yoke, but they didn't look bad. But those things were done. But the car did have like, 800 horses for a Nissan, like the one, well, not the 240, but like the 180 or something. He had oh, a, that's a that, yes, yeah, it's, it's the same car. They just call same it car. 180. It's a 180 because he got it from Japan, but it had an inline six yeah. and he uh, had a big ass turbo on and everything on it was built. It was done proper. It's an RB or a JC. Yeah. Oh, Jennifer, your Jeep can do that. Cool. You know, I rock crawl for three years in South Dakota. Oh, you got 37s. I did what you did on 33s. I'm just saying. <laughs> and a carburetor. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just joking. But uh, you want rock crawling. South Dakota is actually amazing for it. Woo. So, so, yeah, that's South that's Dakota is amazing for everything. There's a know, lot of things. Uh, yeah. Freedom. Yeah. Um, yeah. Being one of them. I did Freedom. just send you a video. If someone wants to see what the professional level of drifting looks like, the, the last round of Formula Drift was this last weekend in California, and uh, a couple major guys went at it. There's some Ford-sponsored cars. There's Mustangs out there. There's a few different vehicles out there for sure, the new Toyotas and stuff. So it's uh, Chelsea Genofa and Odie Bocci's going at it. And 
some yeah. pretty people damn good don't drivers. Know. People, yeah. yeah, I mean they're they're Culture. top of their sport. You can just see what it takes to get out there and like dance with the devil. Basically, it's yeah, it's it's nuts. It's nuts. I had forty fours on a sixty nine Blazer. Holy crap! Where, where did you where did you go with that? I mean, to the mall. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, because that's all I. I got down from I got down here to the south again from South Dakota, and I mud saw bogging street street truck. <laughs> mud bogging trucks don't go on the street. Real yeah. mud bogging trucks. Forty four and sixty nine should be four twenty and sixty nine. Come on, Jen. <laughs> No, dude. I coming from South Dakota and seeing all the, uh, seeing all the, you know, actually going on the trails of these rock crawlers and then dropping yeah. down into Florida and seeing these jeeps on the side of the road for sale for forty grand with you know thirty eight inch tires, but they're this thin, they're rubber bands, and then yeah, rock, rock guards and bumpers and neon lights. I'm like, it's literally a mall crawler. They've never seen a speck of dust. I, was I think disgusted. the only jeep I saw. Well, not the only Jeep, but it was a video I saw a long time ago, and um, it was uh, oh Terrell, you have a good night, brother. Sorry I didn't see you saying goodbye. Hope see you. you uh, yeah, he has. So he's working on a bagram job. He's doing lights. He's making lights. It's Air Force, so there's probably they're probably putting up a stage or something. Or some kind of. <laughs> hey, good luck. Stay safe over there, brother. Yeah, but um, no, I think he's here. I think he's just his company's working, doing something like a, that. Oh, on a Bagram job to send over to Bagram. Yeah, building some stuff. Uh, like they were like okay. they were like giant lights. Ah, he okay. showed me a picture of giant lights. But anyway, uh, yeah, it was a Jeep, and it was winter time, and it was lifted with uh, all the accoutrement that those Jeeps have nowadays, and uh, long arm, shirt arm. But he had the neon, but he was rolling on the hi- on a highway full of snow. I would say probably the most control I've ever seen a vehicle have. Because um, yeah. his whoever was recording him, he was right there next to each other going at least 50. And he would on the road, he would hit the deep ditch, you know, and just roll. I mean, ride it. Not I mean, just like nothing i'm like man first of all that looks scary as shit i think that's just that looks he's just dumb like yeah he is <laughs> but then he had videos of uh that jeep they had that one and then he was out rock climbing and when uh, he did some pretty good stuff in that so i think people it's what you know you got to be careful because some people have them and they look like they're gucci but yep. uh they're not but you know it's all it's to me it's like the dudes that roll around on the dunks in the south, you know. Oh, I, think, I love those dudes. I think it's I think it's yeah. awesome to see somebody doing something just neat with a car, you know. Like I like a lot of those are pretty. I see them a lot. Hell, I was in Missouri and they had a guy with a Camaro and he had that motherfucker on tractor tires. Like yeah. literally, I rolled up in my car and I'm looking up the sunroof at this dude and he's sitting straight up on like a monster truck, you know. I just well, think. Now- it's, I, now they're going even crazier. They got the donks, boxes, and bubbles, of course, on 26, 28. But now they're drag racing them because they have seven, eight hundred, a thousand horsepower. Yeah. Vortex supercharged small blocks and big blocks and nitrous, and they're they're racing them. I mean, I've experienced that quite a bit in my day, but now they I mean on Vice there's a TV show. There's yeah. a, you know, bunch of the you see it, it's amazing. And they're for having those heavy wheels, you think it would be like a janky there was car. a car. There was a car Dude. on that show on Netflix, uh, Fast Car, which yeah. I'd say if you haven't watched it, watch it. It seems like it's lame, but it's actually pretty fun uh, to watch. I just skipped to the part where they were racing, uh, <laughs> all the extra shit. I just kind of like whatever. But they had a dunk on there that was like a twelve hundred horse, twelve hundred horsepower. But like you said, uh, you have twelve hundred horsepower and you got giant thirty-two inch wheels, and then you got a car that's a, like a Lincoln Continental. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like trying to drag race a B fifty two against a freaking F sixteen. But, but if uh, you do it against a, a B fifty two versus a B fifty two, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, you know. But I mean? so I don't know if everyone knows this. I was uh, 
scouted for a TV show months ago, last year, actually. I got scouted for a television show, um, and they couldn't tell me where. I made it to like the fourth or fifth round of interviews with the, all right, with the producers. It was kind of cool. It was barbecue centric. That's why they found me. Uh, a guy, they had an intern scrolling through Instagram, I guess. That's how he contacted me. And it was a legit, you know, um, this dude had all his credit movie credits on his uh, Instagram and all the movies he worked on and pictures of him and talked to him, talked to his, he was a like assistant, assistant producer. But then I got to talk to the assistant producer and um, you know, like interviews, you have to be in a certain room where a certain color, no hats, no lights, nobody around. And they just kind of ask you a bunch of questions and you have to be yourself, which is kind of weird on a video call. They don't really get to see your vibe, but I got the lady to kind of fess up uh, closer to the end, like what show, what network they were farming this to. So it was a show being produced, but it didn't actually have a home yet. So they were trying to, you know, get a show to sell, to shop around. And uh, like last month or something or a couple months ago, I'm sitting there scrolling through Netflix, old Nettie, and I see this barbecue show. This random backyard barbecue show on Netflix, and they have the cast of characters. They have the old Southern white lady. They have the crazy black dude with the mohawk that looks like Mr. T is and acts like one, Kimbo is Slice. Rutledge is hosting. Is that great? Uh, yeah, Rutledge. Yep, Rutledge is hosting. There's two. I, see, I knew about that. A There's few a months couple, ago, couple guys on there. Well, yeah, I, it was about six months ago when they were, mm-hmm. or long, it was sometime last year, middle of last year when I got uh, recruited for it, and. Um, I watched the show. I'm kind of glad I didn't get picked for it partly, you know, because like, once again, the reason I don't like competition barbecue is because these time limits, the soul seems to be sucked out of it a little bit, you know, because you're not like if they would let you just smoke barbecue and do your thing. I'd be more apt to do something like that. Even their challenges. Like I was like every child I've watched the show. You know, and then I get I get a little irritated and don't watch it because they 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 have people doing stuff that's like outside the like way 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 outside a box. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're just like, why why am I baking bread? <laughs> like, what the hell am I doing? Got to be well rounded in the barbecue. You need to be well rounded. Right? You need to bake bread like me. I don't do desserts. I like, have baked the cake on a grill before. Just yeah, saying. Like, yeah. I don't make just desserts. for the challenge. Yeah, we I don't make desserts. Pretty, I make everything drunk. else. I'll make sides. I'll make appetizers. I will make main courses, <laughs> you know. But it's like they were having them do some stuff. And then, like I said, the time limit. And, like, there was nothing that they made that I was uncomfortable. Even one lady, she got, like, calamari. But, of course, it's a produced show, so there's a lot of extra stuff that, you know, doing what I do, I can see that. Like, there's no way these people just came up with, you know, like, they had to have the night, like, hey, this is what you're going to get. Yeah. make a recipe you know because these dudes are coming up with stuff that you're like what and then i, I see know, the man. show you know i watch the show and they did have the required number of black people on there there's three black dudes so i figured like okay you know they didn't want four black dudes and then you know they had a black dude with a beard and he was like bigger than life i'm like you can't have two of us because then we'd be wrestling or drinking 40s they don't know what's going on <laughs> <laughs> no oh my God. Um, but it was it was uh. a cool looking, it was a cool looking show um uh, I can't. I never. I've never seen. Like I said, I don't really watch competition barbecue. But I guess the two people, the one woman on the show as a judge was like the queen of pork, or and the guy was like the king of ribs. I don't know. They did barbecue stuff, but it was just kind of one of those things. Like, man, it'd be nice if they would actually give a show where it shows kind of like actually what I do closer to what y'all do. You know, like I have regular smokers. I smoke the shit out of them. Like tonight, I had a. I did a rotisserie chicken on my smoker on my Oklahoma Joe's with Oak and it tasted phenomenal. I bought that rotisserie. Mine doesn't even come with a rotisserie, but guess what? I put it on it, you know, it's the advantage of being mechanically inclined and you know, sheet, sheet metal. metal. Yep. <laughs> Dude, I got a TIG welder, a MIG welder, a plasma cutter, and a bunch of other tools in here. Yeah, I'm about to weld up some, uh, some stuff for it, for the brace, for the bracket that sits on the grate. I had to stack because where I put it, I had to put it higher. Yep. I might lower it down a little bit, but I don't think I will because of the way that heat 
So high is perfect for that rotisserie away from the heat. And uh, plus, if it's higher, you could possibly do a turkey later. You got to worry about the throw over the grates. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, the throw over the grates, but it's like a, there's a sweet spot. Like it's yeah. too. I couldn't put a turkey on that little thing. It's only like I don't even know the horsepower on that motor. It's tiny. I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, we could. It's only rotational mass, and you, yeah, you're good with a little motor like that. If you can spin a chicken, you can spin a turkey. Yeah, there's just yeah. no room. You could do a Boston butt if you wanted to. That would be nuts. You'd have to create a crazy drip pan rotisserie, like yeah. a, a kebab. Yeah, you know, kebab style. Oh, yeah. Do a butt do, kebab. You have to do bone out and stuff like that. But, what I want to uh, do is also... No, you can do bone in. Yeah, but when you turn it vertical and try to slice it, kind of like a oh, kebab. Because yeah. you, you wouldn't yeah. You know, wait until it's all the way done. You'd get it... You know, and then midway's do done, and then let bottom. it rotate a little bit more, season the outside a little bit more, and, and just ideas. You know, uh, am I sold on the pellet grills? So this is my take on pellet grills. Um, Here we go. I I never I never purchased a pellet grill because of the price. The first number, the first thing that came away from pellets is the price because to get a pellet. Any decent size that I would need for as much smoking as I do, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend at least fourteen hundred bucks. And yep. then you have all these other companies out there, Rectech, Traeger, Yoder, uh, you name it. Uh, they have. I mean, when I was looking when I first started this company, I was and I was actually thinking about getting um, a smoker. I think I priced out a freaking Yoder smoker for four thousand dollars. I'm like four thousand dollars. Like I better get free meat for a minute. <laughs> and then like and then you look at what i have i can do the same thing or better on my freaking 240 gallon air tank on a trailer on my oklahoma joe's cross flow offset heat you know hell even my chip smoker i can i can w- work miracles and that cost me 400 bucks you know so one day i was actually you know walking the lows and they do it right they put the grills right in front of the yard shit so I walk in Oklahoma Joe's one of my favorite brands because I was stationed in Oklahoma and I actually used to go down to OSU and eat at Oklahoma Joe's and <laughs> watch football. And I see they have this pellet. Well, this pellet has the same size as the Traeger Timberline and it costs $600. I was like, uh, sold, not no question. You know, I looked up some reviews, but it was brand new. Like this, this, when I saw this thing, it was like brand new. Like it wasn't out the week before I was at Lowe's. It was out that the next week. And so I got it. And yeah, when I used it, I smoked with it for almost five months straight and the auger motor went out. But Oklahoma Joe's has great customer service. They sent me a brand new auger, which was kind of weird. I'm like, the screw is fine. The motor, but they sent it to me. I didn't question it. Send me a whole new auger motor. I put it in. It worked perfectly fine. Um, it's manufactured, man. They're not yeah. going to send you pieces. They didn't send you yeah. assembly. Yeah, and it's one of those things I put it back together. Then uh, the only other thing that happened to it was that the thermometer, the probe inside the uh, inside the chamber, was malfunctioning occasionally, so it threw an error code. Well, with that error code, they can't fix it, so they got to get you a new one. Well, uh, that's why I called out for an electrician, and he said, "Yeah, just go get a new probe." And I did, and I bought a couple of them because they're eleven bucks. And uh, yes, it's, it's literally, thermocouple. yeah, it's literally, yeah, it's a thermocouple. It's literally, it takes me a minute. If that to change it out, if it has an issue, but I've done, I've done stir fry on this thing I've done. And for what I do, you can't beat it because it takes me an hour to start a fire on my traditional, at least minimum an hour. So for me to do live cooking videos and just cooking for your family, having a babysit a fire, it does get kind of annoying. I still love it. Like I have a buddy coming over for Thanksgiving. We will definitely be traditional smoking. You know, doing our thing, but that is nice. Like tonight, I got home at like two something, and I set up the freaking rotisserie, put it on there, turned it on, let it warm up. Now, mind you, on these smokers, I don't know, I don't know any other brand, but if you do buy a pellet, let it warm up like an oven before you put your meat on, because a lot of these, what they do is they dump in pellets as they go to keep the heat, and that first. Smoke is super hard, harsh, and it will literally just dust your food and you'll have a bunch of just Uh, smoke and uh, nastiness on your meat. So you got to let that first initial burn, let it get burned through, let it get the heat up, 
because smoke without heat, hey, when you're smoking cheese, great. But that first smoke is just, it's almost like if huh, moonshine, you don't want to sip the first pour out okay. still. You go blind. And I learned that because I had bacon on there when I seasoned that thing. I turned it on, had bacon all the racks, seasoned it. And of course, it had that when it first starts, it has this giant plume of smoke billowing out. Then it levels out and it just kind of smokes lightly throughout the throughout the cook. And I pulled that bacon off and it was just black. And uh, because of the smoke hitting it directly as it was as how it was. And um, so I like it. And, you know, and then the pellets, if you get a quality pellet, I use Bear Mountain pellets and they're a good company. I have a resource. I can get them cheaper than. Uh, retail online. I have, I have a spot. So if anyone wants to know if you're a pellet person, uh, hit, hit me up and uh, I can give you that resource. Um, <clears throat> but pretty much you pay $17.99 for a 20 pound bag and I was paying like seven bucks or nine bucks for a 20 pound bag. But I uh, don't do any of that at all. <laughs> yeah. I'm still a, a barrel grill guy. Um, that's what I learned to smoke on, learned to cook on. One of my very, very old dear friends that was a roommate of mine back in college, oh, uh, Booze and Snooze McConnell, Stephen McConnell. I know he's tried to contact you a little bit here lately with Felix, but. Uh, yeah, he uh, got. Didn't he get tattoos on his knuckles? I don't know about that, but. Yeah, last time I picture I saw him, <laughs> oh, got oh, tattoos. <laughs> I talked That's to the him guy whose mom passed away, right? His mom passed. Yeah, yeah, his yep. mom passed away. He got yeah, tattoos no. on his knuckles. This guy tattoos. is a classic. I have to see that crap now. He didn't show me that. I talked to him last week, but uh, he's a classically trained French chef. Um, and went to culinary school in Italy, actually. Um, and he's an artist and stuff like that. And we moved in together while uh, I was living in a college town, managing a bar, and we did what we call Sunday grillers. And we ran the gamut. Uh, yeah, I could grill a steak okay and, and when I met him. I could do some chicken okay, you know. He introduced me to smoking back in 2004, 2005. And, man, I'm talking about Boston Butts, chicken drums, chicken thighs. Like, that's where I, I, I baked a cake on a grill before, you know, yeah. learning temperature control and just a barrel grill, a jar yep. griller barrel grill. And I still have one on my back porch. I buy basically, I usually wear out the cold tray. I buy another cold tray. I keep the great season, you know, I clean them regularly. Um, the thermometer's crap. So I don't even, you know, I got yeah. my Thermo Pro for that. But man, I, I will load up my charcoal chimney with some paper from the charcoal bag in the bottom light it up with a torch like i'll stick my torch in one of the holes in the side to like supercharge it a little bit um i can get a fire going in like 20 minutes dump it in there close the lid, let it die down i use chunks i uh, use a lot of apple wood for because uh, i do a lot of pork and chicken oh, uh, yeah. love some chicken drums and chicken thighs oh yeah and uh i'll throw them on there i one of my main seasonings is cavenders um for chicken it's always a hit. Um, I've been mixing it up here lately, though, with your regular rub and your mustard rub. And it's I need to reach hit. out to my buddy, uh, Scott Bailey. He's actually sponsored. He's a Navy vet. He's actually sponsored by Charboro in a, like a small limited sponsorship, I believe. Mm. But he has Bailey Ultimate Rub. Dude, I ordered, I think, four jars of his stuff. I gave one away. Yeah. Um, and I opened it up and tried it on chicken. And the first thing I thought was... I shouldn't be selling rub. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> like, um, when I taste, well, it's just well. For one thing, it's different. You know, yeah, it's not. Yeah. A, it's not. A, it's not a super complex rub. There's salt in it, and yeah. you know, pepper, and you know, it has more of a less sweet, more of a savory flavor. Yeah. But and but we put it on chicken parts, and we smoked it on at Oklahoma Joe's, and oh my god, I was like, dude, I called him up immediately. I'm like, bruh, bruh, bruh. <laughs> why like why'd you like and I, I like that because i like my stuff but you can't only eat yours but one of those things where when someone makes something that you like so much where you just kind of like it's like driving someone else's car that you know you thought your car was fast and then you get you know you get into michael schumacher's car and you like yeah yeah oh, my, car well, is, my car's uh, okay <laughs> yeah well 
Well, yeah, I, that's with Steve, you know. Reflector oven and the Dutch oven. Uh, no, reflector I, yeah, oven? What's the reflector oven? Is that that, like, sun thing? I, I've seen it, I think, a couple times. With Dutch oven, for sure. I don't have one right now. I've had one yeah. in the past. I have I a Dutch have, oven. I do have uh, a few uh, cast iron pans. That's the only thing I cook breakfast in, for sure. I have, uh, so I have an 18 inch cast iron pan. I have a standard, Dang. like, 12 inch cast iron pan. Yeah. I have a flat uh, griddle. Griddle, like yeah. stand, standard flat griddle, but my my so proudest flat, thing that it got, uh, it, it's both. It's flip. You flip one side's flat, other side okay, uh, yeah, yeah, I grooved. You. I have that for cast iron, and then I bought. And what I did was, uh, it's a old solar. Yeah, I've seen those. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's that brand from Walmart, that Ozarks. Yeah, yeah, brand. Yeah, they sell. And so I got an eighteen inch They're cast decent. iron skillet for like. <laughs> Fifteen dollars or something stupid. Yeah, They're like decent, I was like, but, I mean, if you get into cast iron, you'll you'll see everybody is either searching their grandmother's basement for yeah. the old stuff, old stuff, or like the know, log, or the log, lodge, 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 is lodge. The brand name. Yeah, yeah. And I'm lodge to me, you, you know, you're a metal guy. I'm a metal dude. You know, it's cast iron. No, 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 see, no, 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 no. It's it's season it. See, but no. I know that they have like stuff inside of them. They're thicker. Blah, blah, blah. The, no, the, it's literally the grain pattern and cooling cycle that they use in a lot of these cast iron that, that gives. I know I'm getting real deep, and a lot of people are going to tone out on this crap. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, <laughs> part time, you know, we were partially trained metallurgists in the Air Force in my job. And, you know, when you when you use a certain grade of cast iron and you pour it in a certain way and you let it cool in a certain way, you get a more uniform structure. And so, therefore, you have more uniform heat that transfers through the pan. So, um, there, there is a small difference in, you know, a $15 pan and a $30, $35 pan. I, I, I can see that for sure. So... I'm sorry. I just got a really big order in for two full beard combos. I was like, what? There you go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. People really like me. But no, uh, no for what Ozark, I do. Ozark is actually pretty good. I'm sorry, yeah. Jennifer. Ozark, uh, yeah, that's uh, I cooked my breakfast in one. It's probably got 30 layers of seasoning on it. Yeah, mine, uh, same thing. It's, and it's then flour I, just, oil. I just got I won a uh, I kind of won. I outbid people at a silent auction on a 22 inch Blackstone. Oh. Yes, censorship lodge is too grainy, and that's why mine has like thirty layers of yeah. reasoning on it to level the. Yeah, it is. It's bumpy, and that's again another product of your, your metallurgy. Your your pouring, cooling cycles, and your grain structure in the cast iron. Yep. Um. So, but yeah, I like mine. My Ozarks are cheap. They work. They do everything yep. else those other ones do. I cook exactly the same as I cooked on my grandma's old old uh, skillet. Matter of fact, I should have grabbed that some bitch when I was in Louisiana. But um, yeah. it's all good. I want to make myself an outdoor rack for my no, because like not hanging exactly on the wall, but I want to have them where they hang outside. Because technically, that's what you see them. They hang outside. Outside. You know? Yeah. Not South Dakota. Yeah. This is not outside, have. like under something, not just out in a yard. <laughs> uh, well, that's after like many, many layers of seasoning. Otherwise, yeah, you're, not you're, like day just, one, like season, clean I mean, season. Yeah. I don't know about like, you no more, bro. I mean, sometimes minor, you know. <laughs> minor season. They sit outside with my grill stuff. <laughs> only I time I, a, only time I bring them in is and I I I'll spray them off with water because yep. they've been sitting outside because of pollen yeah, and yeah, dust, yeah. pollen dust and dust. Pollen, yeah. Other than that, I'll spray them off with water, heat them up, let her rip tater chip. So here's another alternative cooking method I just saw lately that so we're you know we're diving deep. I think it's a Turkish guy. He gets these maybe slate river stones like these big platters. Yeah, and he sets them up and like over a couple of rocks under a campfire and takes another one. And he's cooking like leg of lamb and stuff like yeah, that. On that dude it. that like, jumps like all the major food on top of stuff. He like cook. He is not the same guy who cooks like a whole sheep with rice and everything else. And then he oh, like dumps I mean, a ton of salt on top of it. 
man, I've been wanting to do a goat underground Hawaiian style. One of my buddies in tech school is Hawaiian and we were trying to get permission in Turkey to do it, but they would not let it, let us dig into the ground to do it. So <laughs> we were going to order a whole goat from Germany and wrap it in banana leaves and like go at it, but they, they just wouldn't let us do it. I wanted to do that so bad. Oh well, my I gosh. know we don't have a format here, but hey, guess what? I can do it. So I'm going to wrap my shit. Top of the hour, we're going to talk about BBQ. Yes, sir. That's pretty badass. I want that to play at my funeral. That, that's the loop. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah, that's an awesome segue. Oh, segment. I love that. But uh yeah, like I said, barbecue sauce, guys. Get on there. We um we got sales going on right now, 25% off with the promo code thanks on our website. Just like you just entered at checkout, you know, barbecue sauce.com. Cool thing is we will have Black Friday sales coming on. We don't need any promo code. Well, and they be were, black. Because it is, because I am. I don't want to talk to my parents. My mom could have booped the white dude, but you know I could have been mulatto. Talk to your parents. I did talk to but your mom. yeah, you did talk to my mom. You could have talked to her and be like, "Why you mad, mad, mad?" Anyway, <laughs> because they make it Black Friday. I don't fucking know why the Black Hills are called Black Hills. They're green. Well, I do know why that is because they named them after the Black Forest of Germany because there are a lot of people from Germany that uh, settled here when they killed all the natives. But anyway, um, barbecue sauce, barbecue sauce, <laughs> indigenous friendly. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll have random sales uh, going on through the website. So each item will have a sale. The things that are not on sale won't be on the website for Black Friday. And uh, yes, Dean, I know you're Navy and you're probably colorblind, you know, so <laughs> that's too much sweet baby raise intake, people. That's what happens. Oh, yeah. Yellow beard and original. Man, that's, that's you know, order. but uh, so there'll be uh, sales on each individual item. As you click on it, it'll add it to your cart. And that's the sale you'll do. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be anywhere from 25 to 50 percent off throughout the whole site for Black Friday. Thanks for telling me. I just ordered, actually. Thanks. Hey, man, it's all good. Your order again. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Check out his subscription service, too. Give me a plug yeah, on that. Subscription service. Um we still only have a couple people that have uh, bought in on that. Um, you can get a jar of sauce to your door for $10 and free shipping. Try doing that without subscribing. Let me know how it works out for you. Um, you can get from uh, $10 or $40, and that literally gives you one to four jars to your door a month. Um, easily debited. You don't think about it. All those questions and uh, excuses, or, oh, I forgot, or I'm too busy, goes out the window with one easy click of a button add your information in little email little correspondence with me get to talk to the sauce boss we hook you up with that's what you get every month or randomize or however you want to play it or you just hit me up every month and go hey this is what i want this month i send it to you free shipping 10 to 40 dollars you can't beat it hi jade hi it's jade lopez, it's jade lopez. <laughs> what's going on it's jade it's a long story. She Small. thought I said her name, Jadel, <laughs> but I don't know why. Because Jade, this is, mom, this is Mama Bear right there. She wrangles yep. us all in. But uh, yeah, so that's uh that's what we got. That's my spear on beard BQ shoush. So um, we haven't really talked about pew pews. I uh, recently sold all my guns, um, <clears throat> and I sold all my magazines to a guy. Uh, just you know, money. You know, money's tight. Barbecue is uh, eating up a lot of extra of my personal funds. So, you know, guns are, I buy, I buy a lot of guns because they're good. They're good barter. You know, you need some money, sell a gun, you know, it's better than selling crack from what I told. I don't Probably know. not. I don't know. Iran Contra, they sold guns. You gotta have a gun to sell crack most of the time. So. No, you don't. You gotta have people with guns. Well, I mean. I've seen the movies. Yeah. But yeah, so. You know, if you believe that, you know, I have some uh, beachfront property over here in South Dakota, right next to Mount Rushmore. <laughs> Pactola, bro. Pactola. Pactola. <laughs> no, it's going to get kind of weird. Like, uh, I don't really, my political leanings, and we're not going to talk about politics. We'll talk about stuff. 
They don't lean. I don't give a shit about the candidates. I give a shit about what they do for me and what they don't do for me um, as a citizen. And uh, some of the things that Mrs. Harris, uh, soon to be Vice President Harris and President Joe Biden have tried to put in place. I just want people to be straight up and honest throughout. And I know that that's what we got. That's what we're dealing with. Just deal with it. But when you hear about stuff like I have friends in the gun industry and they're talking about putting a $200 tax stamp on every magazine you own. So tax stamps are were instituted back in the 30s, 1930s, 40s, 30s, 1930s. Uh, as a pro- cost prohibitive, prohibitive measure. Yes. For yes. people that couldn't afford, like you can go buy a gun, but now you need a tax stamp. You need 200 bucks. So back in then, I was like saying you need $20,000 yep. to go buy this prohibited item. Well, people that buy silencers, uh, prohibited items, they have to get a tax stamp, 200 bucks. Luckily, the price hasn't raised over the inflation. Well, another thing they want to add to this list are magazines. So, And they want to make it retroactive. So that means, I believe everything you already own is subject yep. to yep. that. There's no so, grandfather clause. No grandfather so, clause. So, t- so technically just in magazines for M4 variants, I would have to pay $130,000 to the federal government. If I didn't sell those I'm already. Not, I'm not going <laughs> to put up my figure. <laughs> nah, I wouldn't like that, dude. When I was in South Dakota, for sure, I would yeah. go in Shield or Cabela's or something like that. Just after work, do, 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 no kids. Like, what's Pick up? Mag. Oh, pig mags, ten bucks a piece. I'm like, okay, bad, bad, bad. Done. And I still have unopened pig mags that are seven years old. Um, yeah. I'm, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, thousands um, of dollars. But this, it's just stuff like that that people, you know, and they're voting with emotion, and it's stuff like that. Like that's why I call it the free states of South Dakota. When I was in Colorado visiting Jade, going waiting for my plane to go to Louisiana, you just saw how like the the insanity of the whole thing, you know, of the whole mat, just everything, how politicized it got, and how just. And I'm sorry, I'm going with. I was trained to wear a respirator. And unless you're going to make beards illegal, my fucking mask don't work. And that's all I can say. That's what I tell people. They were like, where are you wearing your mask? I'm like, when are beards going to be illegal? I'm like, because me wearing a beard negates a mask. That's why surgeons don't have masks. Be- or beards. Or beards. They have masks. They don't have beards. They have surgical masks. Yeah, yeah. They have surgical masks. Not so, beard. so... As far but, as all your weapons. All right, you done? Sorry, sorry. Oh, no, you're good. Go ahead. Roll. Roll with it. I have not lost a damn thing. Put it to you that way. I, I have not lost a damn thing. I have what I have. I will not advertise what I have. I've never advertised what I've had because what I have is mine. And it's none of anybody's business besides my friends that I let shoot that particular thing that I may or may not have. I have a shit ton of fucking uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, Ruger I'm 22s kidding. and uh, what are those uh, where you get when you buy the gun you get a track phone? Uh, high points, bro. High, high points. points. Come on. High points all day, baby. Just, I, I, I worked at a pawn shop right outside right out of high school and we sold high points and they, they were actually kind of new and we used to say, oh, we should sell a, just, you know, a pay per play phone with it so you can throw both of them in the river after you commit the murder you know <laughs> uh you know, it's a lot of fun poked at high points but uh regardless it's a budget budget gun um you can't disassemble it for cleaning or anything but you know what it is a firearm and everybody has a right to them uh, on in, in the united states i mean it's an inalienable right for self-defense um I will, like I said, I will not be advertising anything I have or have had or will have, and I'm not losing anything. Um, yep. uh, hopefully, you know, we have the same amount of people stand up, uh, you know, when that was proposed not too long, not too far Ooh. in the past, you know, with, uh, you know, all the sheriffs, the duly elected officials that are the law enforcement for counties around here banding together and say, we will not support that type 
of confiscation or taxation or anything like that. Um, I remember when uh, it was Obama was in office, and of course, like the time they actually come to the Air Force and be like, "We need some help," like that shit's getting kind of real. Mm-hmm. But uh, one of the airmen in the shop was like, "What happens if they confiscate like all everyone's guns?" I'm like, "Well." Um, if it ever got to the point where they were asking us to go and confiscate weapons, I said, uh, first of all, you shut your fucking mouth and you follow the orders that were given to you. You get your guns, you get in your truck, and we go off base. Then we call all our friends <laughs> I'm like, and let them know what's going on. And then we go in the hills and hide our asses out. He goes, what? I'm like, you watch movies? I'm like, I said, you watch any movies? I'm like, you start talking shit while you're on base. Like, no. You ain't going to follow orders. Yeah. You're asking to either shot or put in jail, no. and you're out of the fight. I was like, you got to do what you got to do to play along until you can do some I, shit. I never, I, I never think that it would hopefully get down <laughs> to that level. But we saw when we were coming through the Air Force – the amount of ass kissers and brown nosers that are literally coming to a command and change rules just for a bullet on their PR. Sir, yes, we'll uh, do that, sir. Yeah, yeah. Sir? No, yes. I've had a lot of amazing commanders and a lot of amazing OICs. Amazing, amazing. But, you know, that's a small drop in the bucket compared to the people, the, the, the habitual freaking you know, toe in the line guys that want to be right there in the front just so they can get a yeah. smooching with the commander when they're, a, you know, first, second LT or captain just to, oh, yeah, yeah, I can do anything, sir. Whatever you, I'll, I'll stay here till eight o'clock at night just to do this, just to make you happy because yep. they're just searching for a promotion. They don't understand what leadership is. They oh. don't understand. You know, they want to manage, they don't want to lead. That's, that was my big problem. Unfortunately, later on in my career, I had the best command I ever had, ever had in Turkey. Well, leaving South Dakota, it's one of those things like, you know, anybody, Willy Wonka could command better than (laughs) some some people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I've experienced everything. I mean, we've had in my squadron at Eglin, we had Navy commanders over an Air Force squadron. Because they wanted to do that whole swapping back and forth thing because we had F-35s. And some of them got them, got it. Some of them didn't. You know, it it was, you know, that's got to be a tough thing to do. But I I seriously think, I'm going off on a tangent here, but uh, I seriously don't think, I think there's enough true patriots, I think, in the armed forces that took their oath literally to defend the rights, you know, yeah. bestowed upon us, you know, inalienable rights for self defense, as well as the Bill of Rights and, and all this stuff. I, I think there's enough that it would never, it may get past if it ever happens. The Pentagon, after that, it's got no chance. If it it'll gets go past so, the Pentagon, I mean, it'll go, there's, it'll go so far. Well, dude, just like Hand, if you watch Handmaid's Tale, they had to, you know, you have some units in the army and Marines that, you know, ride or die with their command. And, but once you, like I told, so, so back when I retired um, in like 14, I got, re- I reached out, um, a company reached out to me out of Colorado and I was thinking about getting a job with them and they did uh, the security for all the dispensaries and all their money transportation because well, I'm happy they finally passed the law that if we legal in your state, you can use the banking system in your state. Did they pass that law? Yeah, they the they, they passed it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. but but this one was like literally transporting hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh yeah, cash from yeah cash, cash from dispensaries to undisclosed locations. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, they sent me a video. They, you know, I got I got through, and this seems like a pretty good theme. And I probably could have made it. I stopped myself on this one because I got through to the round where they actually the interview round where they actually sent me like written out scenarios and in video scenarios where it pauses and then you have to pick what would you do? And then I'm like, I am not willing to draw down on anybody on a highway for someone's fucking money in America. Like this is, this is not heat. This is not a movie. Like this is like literally if they, if I was driving, okay, I'm trying oh to get my it. God, there. I love heat. Yeah. I'm trying to get it there safely. <laughs> You know, blah, blah, blah. But like if someone like came and like 
like nudge my vehicle, came up to me and like windows down, and there are a bunch of dudes in the car with guns. I'm gonna like pull over, let's get out, let's walk over there. <laughs> Please don't mess up our ride. We gotta get back to work. Have yeah, have a good day. Like ammo's not cheap. <laughs> well, this thing, you know, if if you're doing any kind of op like that, you're uh of course you want to be anonymous if possible. Yeah. Sure. Well, and they were they were driving around in, you know, suburbans and explorers and stuff yeah, like that. Probably, you know, yeah. unmarked SUVs that you can't really tell and they drove they didn't all wear the 511. They weren't 511 models, all of them. Okay, thank God. <laughs> but uh that's a, yeah, big telltale, but you still yeah. know, especially you know, and anyone coming after something like that knows already. So it's that part's already out the window. And that was my thing like I'm not willing to do that in America to other Americans for someone's money. Like the government needs to fix this shit. Not fix it. They need to make it. You made a black market. You made a absolutely. You know, and that's what this whole thing with this whole marijuana. Like I taught I was at a I was at a show this weekend and the guy next to me was a book who's a writer. Um he had a he had this dude was an older guy, army, army medic, army uh corpsman or sorry, uh Navy corpsman and cool old dude. Like he served before Vietnam, I believe, and or something like that. But he was in he was so in during I, Vi- huh? He was in no, he was in during Vietnam, but he he never went to Vietnam because of his job. I got gotcha. you. Because he was in San Diego and he was treating because he worked in the hospital, so he was still treating people from Vietnam. So you know when he got in his specialty, he treated people. You know, but anyway, talking to him when he got out, he became a sheriff. And he mentioned, I didn't mention it to him. He mentioned it to me because we were just talking. He was like, man, I don't know. I don't really like this whole recreational marijuana thing, you know, because I was driving around for the last 25 years, stopping it on the highways, yeah. you know, and now they just made it legal. And I'm like, well, that's probably what the, the same guys that did moonshining did thought back in the day. But yeah. when you think about it at the end of the day, you shouldn't have had to go around rounding people up for, for, for weed, you know, and like just the one video I've seen multiple times with multiple different children medically, like the most recent one, this kid is in a full, just super seizure mode, having hundreds of seizures a minute or whatever it is. And they rub that shit on his gums, top and bottom and rub his, they're sitting there rubbing his lips. And as they're rubbing it, he's slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. And it stops. I'm sorry, people. The government used to use this back in the day. Henry Ford made the first model T's out of it. You know, like hemp and all that was built America. And it's like we're eating ourselves. We're fighting over a fucking plant. And we have other things we need to focus on. Let people get high. They're going to do it anyway. (laughs) Yeah, this isn't a show for shots. We're just sipping, dog. We're just sipping. It's impromptu. Look at that cool Japanese car in the background, probably offending someone's ancestors. (laughs) <laughs> definitely my dad my grandpa that is my grandpa refused to roll around in japanese vehicles we were just talking about your imperial J- japanese uh car back there offending oh, our I, ancestors I, 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 <laughs> that's that's cool that's cool i it's it's an investment it's an investment no uh prohibition in my mind is is, is a little ridiculous i mean i Actually, did, back in college and high school, did a couple of essays and, and term papers on it, just really researching a lot of it. Um, thankfully, I mean, I live in Alabama, uh, slightly backward state, uh, joke, which you will. Eh, ha, 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 at least we're not Mississippi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> M I S S I S S I P P. Well, we do. We actually do have a you know a point oh three percent law here, so I mean we do have CBD stores and stuff like that, and and that I, that has actually helped me a good bit. I have not partaken in any kind of THC product in a very long time because of the military and my current job. You know, I respect everybody's decision on that. Um, hey, can't use it. This, that, and the other. Cool, whatever. Um, but, uh, CBD stuff, um, has helped me in my joint pain from the military. I'm a disabled veteran. Um, he and- said joint pain, <laughs> no, literally these joints don't shoulders- cause pain, joints relieve pain. <sighs> Depends on the context, bro. Depends <laughs> on the context. 
But no, it, you're right. You know, uh, back in the 30s, DuPont Chemical started a propaganda war against hemp. William Randolph and, Hearst. And this is, yeah, yeah. This is what led to our current prohibition. Uh, you, you know, um, yes, reefer madness. Absolutely. Yeah. They didn't yeah, want that, that, the they big, didn't yeah. raping white women. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if they could see Pornhub nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it's Ooh. ridiculous to the point, you know, um, you know, the fiber <laughs> industry, <laughs> the cotton industry, the textile industry, you know, is all afraid of hemp and, you know, cuz cotton takes so many resources and pesticides and crap to grow and it's very temperamental. You can grow the same acreage with hemp and do it three times a year. And, yep. it's, and it replenishes the land. Yeah, and it put nutrients back in the soil. And I think I forget what the yield is compared to cotton for fiber with hemp. And it's ridiculous. Yeah, there's way more um, applications for it than yeah. uh, it is. It's just one of those things that's uh, you have religious fundamentalists that just kind of want it banded whatever people that just it's the same folks that make the laws on hunting that don't hunt that makes much sense like in colorado i think they opened up uh yeah. they're gonna reintroduce uh wolves but there's no hunting on them so Sweet. how are they gonna good. be managed yeah yeah good decision good decision good decision when all your when all your elk and mule deer and whitetail are you know decimated you know well they don't want them hunting it's nature's thing let them live their own lives well, that was the thing when I was in South Dakota. We used to get tags for mountain lions. Yep. The first first year I was there, there was a quote, right? You know, 75 lions, you had to report them, obviously. And yep. lions are hard to hunt because you got to stalk them for days on end and go into the backcountry. The next year I was there, it was 85 lions was the quota. The next year I was there, is 100 lions. The yep. last year I was there in 2013, it was like 110 lions, I think, something like that. Like, I bought my tag every year just to have it in case I ran across something when I was turkey hunting, deer hunting, yep. or whatever. Just Speaking to have of, my tag yeah. to shoot a freaking cougar. Yep. Speaking That's of mountain cool. lions and stuff, I saw I rolled out to the, a spot in the hills today, and um, some guy, I always call them poachers when they do this, but they left the whole carcass out. Like, Bro, we went we went straight from marijuana prohibition to cougars. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I got a story about I got a story about a cougar kill. Yeah, yeah. So go ahead. But uh, so I'm out there and uh, straight up, he left both all shank. Like there was good quality meat. Like it was poached. Like I think all they did was take the back straps. I fucking. And the thing is, they killed this within a mile of where people live. So you have a carcass sitting out that's you know drawn in predators and i'm yeah. just like i just don't like people like that yeah so, huh? lions will talk you i uh had a buddy here well boss actually boss and a buddy who went out mountain lion hunting and i showed him a video of a house cat uh stalking a laser pointer a video i made and like it was in the kitchen how it stalked bro, a laser, bring how it laser stalked, pointer out there. yeah how it stalked a laser pointer because I asked him, I'm like, are you going out with somebody? He goes, no. I'm like, you bringing a sidearm? He goes, no. Why? I'm like, because you're fucking hunting a cat. I'm like, as soon as you're within his territory, first of all, he knows. Second of all, he'll see you before you see him. I'm like, and then come to find out that the whole time he had trail cam and this cat, which found, come to find out, purposely walked in front of the trail cam. And he set up where he would get a good 100-yard shot on his cat. Well, when he got out there with his blind and all that other shit for a couple days, never saw the cat the whole time. The last day of hunt, when he paid attention, that cat was on a ridge line over him watching. The whole time, like he get up the pack out, the cat gets up and stretches. He said the cat got up and did like a stretch like a dog. <laughs> like, oh, okay, we're done. And he walked. <laughs> He's done. And he just looked at him, stood there and walked away. And my buddy goes, fuck. I'm like, yeah, dude, you don't hunt cats by yourself. That's why some states allow you to hunt cats with dogs. Oh, yeah. So uh, you remember Beto, right? Yeah, I just found him back on Facebook. Still messing Anthony around with BWs. Escobedo. Hey, buddy. That's that's one dude we may need to roll on Be one night. 
Edo. He, he's still in uh he's still in Missouri. Um yep, in Missouri. Good dude, great dude, retired senior master sergeant. He was a metal tech guy, ran uh LO for the B B twos at uh Whiteman for quite a while. The White man but, airplane uh, patch. Yep. <laughs> we were in the Black Hills. We were hunting turkey one day. And we went out, of course, way before the sun came up, which is way early. Well, not really in the winter in the South Dakota. Went out, sat in the woods for a while, heard a bunch of turkeys gobble, and, of course, didn't see anything. They never flew down. So, you know, we got in this Jeep, and we were coming back down the, the, the hunting trail and looked over to the side, and there's this deer laid out, like, right in front of this kind of meadow, a little jut off of the road. So we're like, oh, exactly what was he poachers come on man we were gonna get out and take pictures and report it to you know dnr and all that stuff so we get out and you know i still i have it i always hunt with a sidearm obviously and a, and a primary weapon it's ridiculous not to um get out walking with a shotgun and uh walk around and the the left side back strap is taking out of the deer and the left hand the back leg is taken out of the deer I'm like, oh, this is just wasteful. Come on, man. Yeah. You know, so I walk around, I keep walking around, and all of a sudden I look down and I see its throat, I see its neck, and it's blood stained, and it looks a little compressed. And Beto's on the other side of the deer for me. I'm like, hey, stop. What, what, what do you, what, what's going on? I'm like, I need you to look over my shoulder and I need, I'm going to look over your shoulder and we're going to walk back to the Jeep. It's like, what do you mean? It's like, we just interrupted breakfast, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like a, a mountain lion just took this deer down because it was steaming. This thing was still steaming. Nice. He just took this yeah. deer down, took the back strap and the ham. And like I said, it, we didn't see knife cuts and all this stuff. I mean, it was like, I didn't look at the back straps, but you could tell the throat, it was taken down. And we were like, nope, we gone. Like, we traipsed our little booties back to the Jeep and went on down the road. Because, uh, yeah, we if we scared him off coming down the road, we're done. Buck walking around missing his back straps? Is that what? Is that some kind of joke? Is there a video? I don't doubt it, man. Don't doubt it at all. Hmm. Oof. Yeah, poachers Ooh. definitely suck. Poachers suck. Poachers I've had a couple suck. on my land in the south. Um, they have definitely uh, been running with gunshots behind their feet. That was actually fun for on my part, not for them. Um, but in Alabama, it is legal because I thought they were a deer. <laughs> they were not wearing orange. That is true. But, <laughs> and if something happens, I can be like, they moved. I thought it was a book. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, uh, can we? I did actually kind of write um, small. You. I know you wrote of, something. I know you wrote something. I saw you reading some shit. Just, 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 just thinking, you know. Do your shit. Lucas reached out to me. I sent him a message, but he didn't. Uh... He he got back to me, man. Like he's uh, trying to prep. Um, he's trying to prep some cars for a, a big race we got coming up. Not mm -hmm. a race, uh, just a party. Like and, you know, like I said, this drifting thing is all about buddies and having fun. And uh, trust me, I've got this barbecue banner behind me. That's going to be flying at this drift event, and I'm going to can't be wait to get that on a car. Uh, actually, tomorrow I'm going to talk to my sticker guy, and I have all your files. And I also just talked to Tara, Lucas's girl, and mm -hmm. uh, about a barbecue kind of thing. And uh, they want it on their cars and trailer as well. Um, but you know, I've talked to them about the details. You know me. I'm down like a clown. I'm going to get my yeah. own stickers. I'm going to get my own stickers made, put on the car. Uh, I'm taking my smoker. I'm gonna, I am already I already got a pork belly in the freezer right now. Um, yeah, already, already getting done. I'm doing pork belly burn-ins with the uh, original and mustard sauce. Uh, big candy. 
It might not be Felix's exact recipe, but uh, it's it, that's going down hey, in the year so bash good. this year. New Orleans Nola Motorsports Park, December eleventh, twelfth, and thirteenth. Yeah, I will be there throwing down. Um, I'm just an idiot trying to slide a cart around and make some barbecue and have some fun. Um, but I will have the barbecue sauce banner up. Um, I think I still have a couple sample packs. I doubt anybody in here is actually in NOLA, but if you are, come down. <laughs> hey, man, um, let me know. I'll, you know, go over to my mom's house. Yeah, well, tell your mom to let me know when she needs shrimp. Yeah. She lives in New Orleans, but apparently she can't get shrimp. Uh, she's just, you know. <laughs> but if, no, no, no. I'm, I know, trust me. Completely okay with it. If she wants me to ride some shrimp over some mobile to visit you, uh, your mom, your grandmother, I'm I'm totally fine with. <laughs> Long she just, cooks them uh, up for me. I just got sent this really cool video. I am going to share. Post it up with folks because it's one of the guys I follow on TikTok. He's an Air Force. Uh, combat. Now, Here we go with TikTok. It? Hey man, can't deny it. It's fun. Shush. But he's a. Uh, he does videos. He does does stuff. Let me pause it. Yeah, I mean, I watch it. Hold up, give me a second. I got to restart it. Pretty much, a couple pieces of shit and a really cool ass plane, and then a a mini turd. You'll see it. I'm just joking. <laughs> it's a weird description, brother. I'm just telling you. Brop. There's your brop. Yeah. There's your uh yeah. yeah. Thirty five, twenty two, A ten, and, and, what was and what? Uh, 16. sixteen. Yeah, sixteen. Yeah, a little sixteen. I get videos like that all the time. I follow a guy who does photography for the Blue Angels, um Thunderbirds, just and he and this one lieutenant at first I thought when he got on there and I was watching his videos that he was a F-22 pilot. But this kid looks I was like, wow, we're giving planes to fucking babies. <laughs> like, this dude looked like he was 12. The thing but, is, uh, we, we ain't babies no more, so they do look like babies to, to like us. Babies, but he wasn't well, he okay for one thing, he he did not look like a pilot. I don't know a stereotyping, but he'd look like he could not hey, make it through. He didn't look like he could make it through water survival training. Like, dude looked pretty soft. Whether he's a photographer, is he too quaffed? Like, he yeah, was he was, dude. He had the, he had the. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He had the, and you, you know, he was know. a butter, bar, you know, and he had that smile. Like, I've never had a hard day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've met a couple people down in Florida from Eglin when you know I was doing the whole car business. These guys yeah. would roll it up off a car and be like, "Yeah, I want this done." Blah blah blah. I just talked to them a little bit. Hey, you Air Force? Yeah. What do you do? Oh, I'm Salty. What? Special Operations Weather Team? And yes. Literally the same like Navy Seal flip back. Like yeah, yeah, bro. What's up, bro? I got parachute in and fucking do the weather. <laughs> yeah. Yep, okay. combat weather. Yeah, he does weather with an M4 on his chest. Like, oh, dude, that's that's pretty hardcore, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, a couple fair rescue guys, uh, a couple combat controllers. Got to know some of them pretty well. Uh, I'm like, man, I salute you. Like, yeah, I'm Air Force, but I'm I'm a pansy. I, compared to I you. pulled up. I pulled up that guy's account. So I was talking about it. I'll show you his account because it has a bunch of cool shit. These are some uh, some patches rolling with a. A boat. Oh, nice. Yeah, a little, little <laughs> nap of the earth, baby. <laughs> no misappropriation of government funds right there. Whew. Dude, that might be interdiction training that's, right there. That's that Navy might, right there. Well, I mean, it might be a SWIC team rolling in when Apache's a low level on the radar. You, you never know. Oh, A10 low yeah, level. Yeah. I can watch this shits all day, son. All day long. <laughs> all freaking day. The hell with that. Dude, I was QA in Turkey over the airfield, and I would literally, any chance I got, I would just 
stroll out to the airfield and watch the stuff roll through. And it was multinational, like all kinds of stuff. Saudi F-15s, like anybody coming by for a gas stop, it didn't matter. I would just... P-51 Mustang. Oh, that's a heritage flight right there. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Dean, that's when you were in the Navy. (laughs) That was the Army Air Corps, if you don't remember. I know. (laughs) I'm talking to Dean. He might not remember because he's that old. (laughs) Were you on the Enterprise, Dean? (laughs) The USS Enterprise? The USS Enterprise with Captain Kirk? Man, they don't come on, man. That's Star Trek, bro. We're talking about the military, not fake stuff. The Enterprise. (laughs) Next thing you know, they're gonna be like, "My boss is a Jedi." Yeah. Hey, Jennifer. The (laughs) comments, though, Uh, Jennifer. No, the mustard is not spicy. I'm not a spicy guy. I can take a certain amount of heat. I like buff. I like crystal sauce sauce. That's one of my mainstays. Um, yeah, yeah. It's weak. I know. Sorry, I'm half Viking. My taste buds just won't take it. Um, they you know, are Vikings. Yeah, yeah, whatever. My middle name's Larson. Well, no, but, uh, I, I, I was, I was educated in this from a Norseman. You're Norse. You're not a Viking. Vikings are what they did. Yes, absolutely. You can't be a noun. And she she actually, like, when people post, like, I'm a Viking, she goes in there and goes, you're not a noun. You're Norseman or you're well, an idiot. Well, unless you're from, your family is from a coastal town that did travel, and then you ended up being, by default, a Viking. No, they so went out I, and Vikinged. They from Vikinged. what you said. Vikings. They, is that like vacuuming? No, that's what they call uh, pillaging and going to uh, conquer. That's what, that. yeah, yeah. That's what Viking. That's what Viking conquering, going to explore. That's what Viking. Explore, was. exploring is what they call it. <laughs> we call it exploring. I did some exploring when I was in college. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> some Me cervical too. Viking. Some cervical. <laughs> cervical. <laughs> oh wow, Sam. It hasn't been recent, but she still did call me her little man whore. I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry I was honest. I mean, you still married me. Uh, it's your own fault. Uh, love you. Hey, you guys have two beautiful girls. You know. Oh, my God, dude. Uh, so we went for uh, little pictures this weekend. Um, not family pictures, just pictures of the girl, holiday pictures. It was actually one of my old friends from uh, high school. She's an excellent photographer down here in the Southeast. Love lady photography. Um, so Annabelle and Eloise, Annabelle seven, Eloise is four. Eloise is usually the one like, hey, take a picture of me. I'm posing. Take a picture of me in my Jeep. And my gosh, uh, like she is the first one to do that. We got there and she was like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like, sh- Stewart on Mad TV like did not want to come out of the bathroom with a dress right. on. Oh my gosh, it was ridiculous. And then, like me and Sam, we were this close to like just pulling her out. Remember, I gotta room. let dogs in. Okay, hold it down. This, I got you. This close to pulling her out and whooping her butt. Like, yeah, you know, we, we're not disciplined parents, but we keep them kind of tight. And then all of a sudden, we're like, smile, Ellie, and she goes. Like forcing a smile with no teeth, and it just we just laughed the rest of the freaking time. It was ridiculous. Oh, kids are so dumb, but so fun. Ah, why do you have kids? I mean, I understand why, but I mean, man. So, I guess we gotta carry. Let's read some comments right here. All spice down here in Texas. What's up? What are you talking about, Jennifer? Let me scroll up a little bit. So the mustard is is not spicy. It, it's well, it's got a tiny bit, a little bit of kick, to where like my kids don't like it. Um, but it fades away if you cook with it. Um, he has done some prototyping, and he sent me a little bit with a spicy mustard, and I've tasted a little bit. It lit me on fire. Um, and then I pass it along to some other people, uh, other patrons down here in the, my area, and they absolutely loved it. 
Um, uh, yeah, uh, he needs to push him to uh, continue prototyping that. I'm interested for his coffee rub and uh, maybe a coffee sauce. I think he might be doing. I've made a few uh, bourbon coffee rubs, tomatoless bourbon coffee rubs in my time, and they've been pretty, pretty tasty. Um, kind of particular on that, though. I mean, you can get if you don't do it right, you can get some a decent amount of bitterness in there. So, what is this? So we can agree that W is now a VA king. What, what, what do you mean VA king? That I ride the lightning? No, no, no. I'm only forty percent, bro. Probably should be more, but. <laughs> Oh no, I get it now. Yeah, the king. Ah, you ah, got me there. You got me. You got me, Jennifer. I don't know if we're doing shoots on this. This is not the bar. Um, little weird. I don't know. This is just a impromptu. Whatever we want to do. We we invited one of our other buddies on that is a veteran. Um, he he was working on cars all night. Just spur a moment type of thing. Um, grandfather's name is Finson, a cousin of Norway named Liv's daughter. Wow, okay. My uh, grandmother's maiden name was Olila. That was the one who was from South Dakota. My grandmother was born in South Dakota. My grandfather was stationed in South Dakota. Uh, they met at a bar in Sturgis, South Dakota, because my grandmother was a teacher at the time, and she could not be seen drinking in her hometown. So, connect the dots there. Whatever, whatever we're gonna do, Sturgis, you know, back in the fifties, probably kind of wild. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> gonna make a video on how to strip a jeep. Just just sit in the yard for two years and it'll rust apart. It's, it's easy. It's all mine did. Easy. Uh, my dog is not in the garage at the time. She usually travels through and goes back inside. because She gets in bored. She gets bored. <laughs> I do. All right, Dean. I do like the Barbie joke. <laughs> I do have a Barbie Jeep in the backyard. If you, if you'll look through, Barbie Jeep had a Jeep. Ken's vet, yeah. Grandma's maiden name is Anderson. I just been reading through comments and uh, catching up on them, BSing about names and random stuff and rusty Jeeps and uh, yeah. Not too much. I'm back. I had to switch dogs. My dogs. <laughs> switch upstairs. dogs. My dogs. Downstairs. Her dogs upstairs. Oh. No, I don't let Yoda sleep outside of his kennel because uh, he's the oldest bulldog. And if you let him, all you hear all night is. <laughs> You're like, shut up. Stop looking. Stop looking shit. Stop looking shit, Jade. I'm trying. I'm trying. Hey, Jade. I'm yeah. trying. Throw me in the deep end. Go up the deep end. I'm telling you, people, I know um, Dean has been the only person here that has been able to see me in my natural element on TikTok live uh, when I go live and do my cooking. And the only reason. Oh, yeah. Everyone wants to see me in my element. And the only reason. I want to see is just on TikTok. Is uh, I get to play music. Like here, if I had music playing, they mute my audio. I'm home alone, and it's like cooking with no. Me- it's just not natural. It's not the Christian thing to do. Yeah. And <laughs> it's just fun. You know, you're sitting there, you know, drinking. Sometimes, well, this weekend I will be, especially after tomorrow, when my buddy gets in. Uh, but it's just fun. He's seen them. You know, sitting there talking about bullshit. Matter of fact, me and uh, I talked to him about this damn show today on TikTok when I got home and I was smoking that uh that chicken. Chick. When I did that, when I did that chicken, I'm gonna pull up a. 
we talk about smoking chicken around here. <laughs> Where's is my? That, is it still new school or is it old school? Uh, new school. Because I the, mean, on the rotisserie. But oh, okay, okay. that's it right there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, did see that. I see that repost not on TikTok, but it do, it was just so nice. I dig it. Did a little little bondage practice with the. <laughs> so what? What is all? Did you inject that, or you rub that, or what? So I pretty much practiced my brine for the turkeys mm. with it because you can you can brine a chicken quicker because of the, the volume. Blah blah blah. Mm. Um. So. A half cup of salt in the tur- in turkeys. It's a half cup of salt, uh, a cup of dry rub, a tablespoon of rosemary, a teaspoon of turmeric, basil, a tablespoon, and I think that's all I put in it. I had to took a picture. I don't really remember everything. Um, hey, that's why. One. So I take pictures. But also, I add with the water. I put it in there, whisk it up, making sure it's all in there. Put your chicken in or turkey in, um, and those, especially if you're doing it over 12 hours every day, I open them up, push them around, making sure they're moving. You know, getting that yeah. Yeah, water yeah. moving around. You know, if you were fancy, yeah. you were fancy. I actually saw a guy who had a fish filter yeah. Yeah. without yeah. the filter on to keep the water moving circulating yeah, the water he had a fish filter without the filter on his cooler and i use a cooler mainly because i put ice in it because the safety range is 45 degrees for oh. your uh for bird so keep We're it in that safe, safety safety range that's why my brine bucket i leave outside when it's 40 degrees outside in cold water you don't have anything to worry about bacteria growing that's your biggest enemy and the reason automatically no matter what season you put on no matter what you do to your turkey, if you roast it, if you fry it, if you smoke it, brine birds. You put that bird in brine, no matter what you put on it, you don't even have to inject it. It's sucking up all that moisture. Just become chicken, chicken juice, pretty much, you know, bird juice of whatever sort. And it's just going to make it super flavorful. Like this one tonight, I had that chicken. I put so much mustard in that. Then I uh, rubbed it down with my... Um, I make garlic confit, which sounds super fancy, but all it is is ro- it's a uh, baked garlic in oil, which makes the garlic cloves stay solid. But when you go to squish them, they become paste. Well, yeah. the olive oil I use also becomes infused with the garlic. So I use that to rub it down. So you dry them off. And that's another thing. When you pull it out of the brine, you want a totally dried bird. Let's, let's back up to the garlic confit. So you take whole like bulbs of garlic, right, and chop the top off whole. No, no, okay. No, no, nope. I'm, you I'm peel, you down peel, the recipe you, here. So garlic confit is pretty sim- simple. Uh, you just peel garlic, or you can go buy the whole peeled uh, garlic uh, buds, pods, whatever you want to call them. Uh, cloves, cloves. Garlic. Yeah, the cloves, and you just submerge them in oil. Put them in a 250 degree oven mm. for about three hours, and then you let it rest, let it let it cool down. Yeah. Put it in a jar, mason jar, put a lid on it, put it in the fridge. Yeah. Um, it's perfect if you do um, the French bread kind of toast, and you can take it, literally squish it, and rub it on there. It's almost like butter. It comes out you like mean, butter. You mean garlic toast? No, it's garlic toast once you make it garlic toast. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, this I is, know. This I is yeah, this is better than garlic toast because what I did for a snack is I did that. And I did a, a puree, not really puree. I put in hammer and pestle with some garlic and olives, two different kind of olives, green and clamata. Oh, and made like a. Up. Not hmm? on a tangent. So you use, not on a tangent. Let's keep going on that same recipe, though. So you use that garlic uh, yeah. confit. And, and that's how you made the garlic confit. And you did yeah. what with that. So I took the oil from it and rubbed down the chicken because you need to rub they down your bird with, it. you need to rub down the bird with oil because when you, especially Absolutely. when you smoke them, that's the only way to get bite through skin. And it sounds all fancy, but what yep. it is is if you don't, the way smokers work and the way they heat the water and the oils in the skin just kind of stay there and evaporate. Yep. But when there's oil on it, it actually lets them cook out and they yep. get crispy. Yeah, that, yep. Without that, it gets rubbery. So I rubbed it down with that olive oil, which was infused with garlic. Then I put the yep. mustard rub on it. 
you know, and I have my muscle rub and a little shaker, which I'm working on getting those little shakers so I can sell them on my website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, working on it, but it's a it's a supply chain issue. Like my co-packer can't even get them, and he uses them for other products. So me getting them just to sell is, you know, a mood point for him. But anyway, I've delabeled and repurposed. Yeah, a few people just delabel and repurpose. Yeah. But some people you can, and, you know, you can buy them and then I'll sell little labels for them or something like that. But anyway. Um, so I did that, but what I do is I add salt. So I don't add salt to my rubs or sauces because I let people, that's one thing I'll let yep, you add to absolutely. your flavor profile, your yep. taste. So after the rub is on, then I add some salt to it. The whole thing, of course, put it on a rotisserie, shove it together, let it roll. And that's pretty much simple. And I set a timer for 45 minutes and I always check it about 10 minutes before the 45 because a chicken should take you no longer then 45 minutes to an hour max on rotisserie yeah. on rotisserie you yeah. know even on the smoker when i'm smoking a chicken spatchcock um same thing oh, i don't yeah. do i don't do uh whole chickens but beer button all that anymore because spatchcock is just so more much more yeah efficient. yeah yeah I've, I've done that not too long ago with one of my old recipes it was a it was a compound butter, you know, rosemary, thyme, sage, the poultry trifecta, and you know, a little bit of salt and stuff like that. Rubbed underneath the skin, and, and you know, not ejected, and sitting on a half-filled beer can with a couple herbs in the beer. You know, it's a, it's, it's a decent way to smoke them and stuff like that. I just, you know, it, it, I don't know. I think I progressed a little bit more these days. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, it. it as far as a flavor profile and how to apply the flavor flavor, you know what I mean? So Dean, I actually tied it up first. Then I, uh, I tied it up. Then I rubbed it down with oil and then I sprinkled it down because you want to do whatever you got to do. The only thing I didn't do was next time I'll do, I'll probably do it on a, so I mixed up two processes that I'm going to put all together. The very first time I did the rotisserie, I put the chicken on the spit and I hung it over the sink and then I just doused it over the sink with everything, which makes an amazing cleanup. <laughs> this time I, I tie, I bound the chicken up because I didn't really like the legs flapping and the wings flapping and I bound them up. Then I bound those together. So it pulled the leg, the wings down like this and the legs up, which kind of opened up the chicken a little bit. It was kind of neat, something I never did, but it actually worked out really well. And it, it and it came for the first time I had a chicken come to temp all together, like thighs and breasts. Never had that. Any bird. Yeah, yeah, have, so just... yeah have the temp come together. But so this time I, I wrapped it, then I rubbed it, then I seasoned it, but then I added the spit to it. Uh, I think I'm going to do put it on a spit, tie it up, rub it, and season it over the sink, and then put it on. So kind of combine those two processes seems like the, the, the perfect, easiest way where you're not yeah. touching it, knocking off seasoning. And when I Since, season yeah, it, I, I literally just douse and I don't rub. I pat in, sp in spots that need to be patted. Yep. I just, but I mainly, I don't try to touch it at all because I want to sprinkle. sprinkle. I just sprinkle it all over, sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle it all over it, you know, get it all up in the underarms and everything else and let well, it rip this. Oil, so you got to have enough yeah. oil on it, you know, not doused and dripping. Yeah. Have a decent layer where everything will stick. That's that's the biggest thing. You have too much oil, you, you, it's gonna r run off with it. So temp, uh, I ran my smoker about uh, two fifty to three hundred in the beginning, and like I said, it's a rotisserie, so I wasn't really sm smoking it. But the highest smoking level on my smoker is three hundred degrees. So pretty much between, uh, I ran it about three. It was uh, two fifty to three hundred for I don't know the first. Uh, 20 minutes and then i have a grill uh mode on our on mine where you can turn it to low medium or high which kicks the temp up to like 400 but i got distracted um <laughs> the chicken came out fine it was a little bit the skin was a little more crispy looking burnt looking but tasting it it wasn't it was just the fact that you know i had all that seasoning on there yeah. um and i was spraying it down with a bourbon honey um Mix I do I do a uh, hot water you get hot water out the microwave sugar, sugar yeah you add uh you add bourbon or sorry you add honey to it that's how you get the honey to be easily movable in hot water pour it in a bottle 
add you know a couple shots of bourbon compared to how much sugar or some, how much honey and water you have in there. And I use that as a spritz. Sometimes I add lemon, uh, lemon and honey. You never know. Yep. It's, it's kind of what, what, what. But yeah, it's a chicken, and the temp you want to do is uh, th- about three fifty. That's your that's your golden temp, and the internal temp of the chicken is one hundred sixty five. Another thing I had to tell people when you do the brine, like I do brine, um, the breast the breasts usually take a longer time generally to come to temp than the thighs. You have the thighs at like, yeah, you have the, you have a thigh at one hundred seventy degrees, and the breast will be like one hundred forty five. Don't worry yeah. about your thighs because they have enough fat on them. They'll they'll be yeah. fine they're unless dark. you just totally roast them. Then they'll yeah. be dry. But uh, <clears throat> the one I did a week ago, the breast the thighs got to like one hundred and seventy five hundred eighty, and the breast only got to one hundred and fifty four degrees. But I had it on the smoker so long that they were done. If that makes yeah. any sense, because you have you have your your safety parameters for temp. At you know beef, you know, 130, 140 to 150 or higher than that, you're you're not American. Uh chicken, all all lamb and stuff, all you know, all all birds are 165 degrees, no matter if you grind it yep. up, whatever, 165 degrees, all poultry, yep. 165. But the one caveat, which I'm sad I even use that word right now, I'll take it back. The one thing I'll add to that is if you put something on low and slow. It can cook to finish and never reach 165. Yeah. It'll never reach the target temp for that meat. So, like when I made my bacon, um, I make bacon, it's pork belly. I, you know, I cure, cure it for seven to 14 days. Then I put it in a smoker for literally 120 degrees for 12 hours. It never gets up to 165 where pork's supposed to be, also. No, 140, 40, 40, no, 165. 140 is pork loin anyway sorry um so it never gets there but it's done it's good it's good to go so yeah it's good to go lime uh yeah i've done lime juice uh with mine lemon lime i've done lime juice because i think that's what i have in the fridge so <laughs> Peasant titties. Oh, Dean. I'm a titties man. Chicken titties, <laughs> turkey titties. titties. I dig it. I dig it. Peasant titties. Pig titties. One thing I, pig, one thing I will no, add. No, pig titties. <laughs> pig titties. Oh, I'm good with that, too. That's, that's pork belly, baby. That's pork that, belly. That's got titties on it. I got <laughs> two in the freezer right now with skin still on them. Yeah, me too. Oh, I got one in the freezer right now. But uh, Yeah, hey, I, I, I cut them up in the in the se- like uh, six inch sections. Oh, okay. Strips. I haven't found the cubes yet, but I should probably do that before you freeze them. That would make it way easier. Yep. That's you know why I did I mean? it. I processed they would, them out. It would. Uh, Just yeah, make I sure you cut it uh, skin side first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I'll always flip it skin side first. Sharp knife. Just make sure that shit's right sharp. It. God, I hate cutting through skin. Put and the skin. cooler, and, and the cooler, the better, because then the fat and the meat will stick together a little bit better mm-hmm. when it's colder. So, one thing on uh, sauces and rubs, I know a lot of people are maybe medium advanced, maybe smokers here, maybe not. Um, one thing I definitely ran into through the years and <laughs> made the mistake when I just forgot or was well, a little intoxicated is that watch your sugar content on anything on the outside of meat when you're roasting, smoking anything. Because sugar caramelizes very well, but then it burns really quickly. Really easy. And it will, because I, I was talking to Felix not too, you know, or before this weekend. I was like, man, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do this injectable, but I'm going to mix in some rub, mustard rub, you know, to taste. Because like he said, he doesn't put a lot of salt in it. He lets, you know, lets you add it to your, your profile, whatever you want, you know, garlic, salt, whatever. Um, and I was like, man, I, I think I'm going to put it on the outside of the outside of the turkey, too. And we didn't think much about it. And I started looking and I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, there's there's some sugar in that. So if I'd have done that might have had a crusty dusty you know burnt bird you know um so just watch your sugar content on anything that's in direct contact with flame or infrared for that matter 
I would I would say um, I've made that mistake for sure. Um, anything you want to add at the end, like uh, like your sauce at the end of ribs or something like that, just for a caramelization or a small char, absolutely. But if you're a beginner, do not sauce your ribs before smoking or grilling. Well, we've been at it for two hours now, so uh, we're going to get off here. Scramjet is uh, <laughs> out of gas. I'm not. I don't know about you. Go fill and up again. Scramjet got to work in the morning. So even do I. I work, even though I work for myself. I have, so do uh, I. <laughs> I got to go package deliveries and whatnot and make sure. Yeah, care. I know. And get them out in the morning, but I'm glad we got to get on here, guys. Dean, Jennifer, uh, <clears throat> uh Fukin Citizen, <laughs> yeah, you know, anyone you want to name out. Thanks for Dan Webb, Dan Webb, who else? Damn, Jade, thanks for getting on, yeah, Jade, yeah. you know, giving us some bonificity. I made that one up right now. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll, I'll do that. I'll Give us some bonificity that. on here. I just figured, like I said, I talked to Dean a little bit on my TikTok, and you know, he kind of said it. He goes, "We need more interaction during the holidays as veterans, as a yeah. whole." You know, I ran into, and it was prophetic. I ran into the guy who runs Mission Twenty Two. I saw him. The other day when I was doing a TikTok live where I just kind of when I'm driving around doing deliveries, I'll have my camera on my dash pointed forward and I'm at a red light and he's at the corner of Fifth Street and Omaha with a big sign and an American flag and his Mission 22 hat. And it's a sign that says Mission 22. If you need a sign to not kill yourself, this is the sign, you know, funny, ironic, but true. And then I ran into him the day picking up cheese at Sam's and I was just like, man, you know. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Talking to him about some stuff and just, you know, he thanked me again for um, sponsoring that march, you know, feeding all the guys did the did the Mickelson Trail part yeah. of the march here in town. And it was just like, get there. And then, of course, our show's not going to air. And I was kind of looking forward to it. And I was just like sitting there on my TikTok. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do something about this because that's what I that's what I used to do. You know, you see a problem, you see something to fix. And if you can do it, you fix it. Because if Webb wasn't on here with me, I'd have been on here by myself. Uh, <laughs> rambling, 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 and doing well, at least the thing. Help, you know, you can steer me in certain directions. I can steer you in certain directions. Yeah, I, I know but, it was a lot of barbecue talk, but that's what me and Felix you know, share. That's what we were talking about. We I told him. I said, "He goes, what's the format?" Because Webb is, if you can't tell, he's a very regimented uh, individual. I can't really tell. But uh, <laughs> it, it, it will it will seem like that on the surface, but you ask yeah. my wife, and I'm just like, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. yeah, but it's just like, and that's cool. You need that balance. But you know, he asked me, and I'm like, dude, we're just getting on here, and we're just gonna be there for everyone else. You yeah, know, absolutely. um, yeah. Thanks for letting me rep my shit and talk crap, and you know, sling barbecue sauce and rubs and shirts and whatnot. But a hundred percent, do this for all you guys, like. I do it for me because it helps my my mental. Um, these shows, getting on here, being able to bullshit and ramble, you know, because I I, I I dipped into my I dipped in my mental a little bit today after I got got home. It was uh, you know, with the whole holidays and grandma on hospice and just craziness, like just other just other stuff. I ain't even gonna talk about on here. And you're just like, ah. Huh. You know, it kind of got to me, and I just kind of start pumping myself up with fucking Christmas music and just everything else. And I was just like, I want happy. But then, of course, I remembered I had to quit doing that because there is one song that killed me when I was in Depo. And I used to, I asked her to roll more leggings. I've been fine. <laughs> um, I should have, I, I stay away from this Christmas song every year because I used to, be, I miss so many Christmases and stuff. But it's that rascal fucking flat song. I'll be home for Christmas. Uh, I've listened to that shit and and I've I was in an airport traveling, leaving, and that came on at the airport. I'm just like fucking in tears. <laughs> like uh, I I don't listen to country, so uh, huh? I, I'm I'm not 
Not big in a mainstream country, put it that way. So, well, no, no, uh, neither I'll, am I. I, I like look it up though. No, no, I like no, Rascal well, Flatts because his voice is unique. They're kind of almost yeah. like an acapella group with music with actual instruments. You know, because they're they're unique. They're kind of like pop. If you people, if you want to be honest, but I'm the sorry, nickel, to, the Nickelback of country. They're the Nickelback no. of country. No, 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 no. That's Florida Georgia line. But no, no. Uh, I no, mean, these guys were the Nickelback of country before Florida. Before, before there was a line for Florida Georgia. Before the, before <laughs> that was they, they were there first. But I will say, it's pop country, whatever you want to call it. But they're good people. They did. They you know, um, good, good, good music. Voices. Good voices, good. Good, good musicianship, any kind of good art, you know, yeah. is is universally accepted. You know, well, because or, it was like uh, when you hear him sing, and you listen to the song straight up, he is a singer. He's not auto tuned. Yeah, he's yeah, not yeah. the the music is not the it's not the algorithm music. Yeah, it's good yeah, because absolutely. it's good. Yeah, you know, it's not that catchy where I can take that and plug something else into it. But yeah, that's the one song. So I was like, I better quit listening to country music because if that pops on, I'm done. <laughs> so I went, I, I, I went back to my my pop and hip hop and whatnot. Listen to it while I was cooking. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and I was just like, I, I'm, I'm like, yeah. And then I started seeing some of the people. Um, I apologize to an old gentleman for cursing about Christmas music at the store. Store, Jade, you weren't cursing, were you? Jay. Uh, my wife put up Christmas wreaths on the girls' windows yesterday, and I chastised her for it. I'm like, and I stopped. I stopped myself. You're like, you know what? You do you, boo. I you, noticed you this have, year. I noticed this year. If, do I don't know do. if it's uh, if it's political or not, or people just need. I think people just need that Christmas happy because yeah, of the uh, election. Because yeah, what I'm noticing, a lot of the people that are putting up their Christmas Dude. lights. Or Trump it's supporters. Not the, it's not the election. It's the entire year. Well, yeah, the entire year. We just need. We, we're, need we're, we're pushing. We're pushing for 2021. Right yeah. We're, pu- we're pushing for 2021. But a cool video, which I hope ain't real, um, showed that show. Remember that show in 2015, Last Man on Earth? Mm-hmm. In that show, he writes on a rock what year it is. And the year he's in is 2021. Oh God! <laughs> hey, Dan Webb, uh, with the dude with the same last name as my first name. Uh, pro tips for sure. Um, I mean, you, I, I'm not a pro. Felix does it for a living, but uh, we just like barbecue, bro. I mean, it's uh, all about the passion, man. It's all uh, about. The I feel. learned. I learn more by watching others and experimenting. Like, just I learned even on. I was watching a video on TikTok of this guy cooking ribs and the way he takes the backs, the, the, the silver skin off the back, yeah. the membrane was just like super easy. And I was like, how come I never fucking did that shit? Instead of picking off the edge and the, oh, he does the middle. And he ribs. literally takes his finger. Huh. No. Oh. Yeah. It's not easy. That's the thing you're talking about. He showed it. He's like, Oh, he just takes his finger and pulls it up. And well, yeah, here we he are with a, a knife carving. Well, no, he like, takes the finger to... and pulls it up out the middle, and then he lifts it up out the middle, the whole rib, and he he works a works a line through the middle, hooks it with his finger, picks the rib up, pulls the rib down, and pulls that up, and it comes right off. I tried that shit, and I was like, it fucking worked. And then I showed other people, and they're like, I tell other people, like, that's amazing. Dude, You're so do it. I'm like, you need to do a TikTok video on. No, no seriously, like, because I have not figured that out. I'm yeah. one of those assholes. I cook a lot of ribs. I'm pretty good at them. Um, I, screw a competition, but like my family. Yeah, loves I don't do her, competition right? shit. Yeah, but no, no, you you let me know how to take that silver skin off. That, that's a tip right there that everybody needs to know. Yeah, I will. It's yeah. super simple. Like you, you just pick it, pick it from the middle of the rib on the back yeah. side, okay. and yeah. you work, you work all the way through to the opposite side. You have a yeah. t- little yeah. tunnel. You hook your yeah. fingers in there. You yeah. pick the rib up. And you ju- literally just pull the rib down, and you s- and you pull the membrane up as you hold the rib. You can leave see, it on the table, and you just pick it up. And what's the see? I've heard different theories too. Like it needs to be a little bit warmer. It needs to be a little like fresh no. out of the fridge, no. or like you know, for the silver skin. The reason the, the reason people want it colder is because when it's colder, the meat is stiffer. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. when you're plucking yeah. it up, but I've done it with the meat. Like, I've done it. You know, if I ever had them 
you know, like I wa- I've washed a, a set of ribs before. You have them super when they're sitting in there and they're just super wet. Uh-huh. You know, and that's why you use a paper towel. And yeah, once I had to actually use a paper towel to actually get the middle started. But once you get that mid- middle started, it's perfectly fine. And I will you tunnel in there. Yeah, yeah. I'll make a video. I'll make a video on it. It's super sim- simple and easy. But that'll definitely be after the holidays because I have, I'm focused on these turkeys. I'll be doing greens. I'll be doing everything else. I don't really know if I'll really be on. I will be launching my um, what's today Monday. So twenty third Monday. Uh, so I'll try to get my turkey video out by Wednesday and get nice. it posted because I'm I took pictures of the process and I'm kind of putting it all together and I, I just got to do uh, voiceover and talk on it to give Can the, we get a, a verbal preview preview of what you're doing in your turkey. Turkey. I don't have it on this computer. No, 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 just you telling us what you did on your turkey. Oh, on my right, turkey? Right I'm now. just going to be going over the brine. Um, okay, the okay. ingredients I used. You'll see the ingredients I used in the brine. You'll see both the turkeys I used. There we go. You'll see how I literally fill up the coolers, uh, put yeah. ice in the coolers, uh, put the seasoning in the water, put the turkeys in there. Nice. Um, like today, this morning when I came out, because the coolers are sitting in my kitchen, I popped them open. I have a giant whisk or a giant spoon. Just kind of mix them up and move up, move the water around, close it back up. Um, it'll go over and then uh, it'll even go over the cook. Um, it might not be in the video because I'll be cooking mine the day of. So, yeah. But I want to get this out so people can prep it because the biggest part, no matter what seasoning, seasoning only matters to your taste buds. If you want a juicy yes. turkey, you have to brine it. I have done them without brining them, but they are very hard to make juicy. But I know I, I have my own views on that, but uh, no, I do want to try brining. Um, and me and bring it, bring it, let's go dirty. No, no, no. Well, we have, talked, we have talked about brining kits before, yeah. You... And, and I, uh, I actually that's why I remember? measured out my brine this time because okay. I'm going to make a brine kit. Maybe no, I'm gonna make a brine kit. I was trying to have you a little bit like an elusiveness like a mysterious thing like oh maybe i might uh, i'm a black dude with a good credit score i'm already a mystery (laughs) (laughs) and here we go (laughs) (laughs) but uh on that note folks uh thank you for listening to scramjet and like i said in the deal uh we're working on it maybe maybe not (laughs) <laughs> that's what i'm talking about you know like even everything like if you uh if you get out of here if i remove him and then i remove me you guys will get to see what i have for the backdrop that's the backdrop of the show um I got the little mask up there with the american flag eh, it's all like whatever i'm working on some you working muted on yourself during that, so. Well, I know I did. I can't. You, can't, okay. I didn't mute myself when you're off. You're, you can't talk. But I wanted them to see the backdrop. Gotcha. That we had because you oh, can't yeah, see yeah, it yeah. with us. With yeah. us up here, you know, like there's a couple different things I can do, but you can't really see what's going on. Gotcha. But gotcha. um, yeah, and uh, I'm kind of. It's going to be random if this show continues. This is a one-off. It could be bounce around, name will change, whatever. But I kind of like to use this where. And it also gives the other hosts some time. It is the holidays. There is a lot of, you know, a lot of business. People are out hunting. People are out doing stuff. But, you know, if I can do it, hell, I did a show while my grandma was in the other room on hospice. You know, yeah. I love you yeah. guys. I believe in this network. And I I think we do good work, even if you don't see it on the outside. But, um, you know, the people that we were outreach to give a give, you know, give some time to just. Uh, not be in their heads, you know. Hey, it's helped I'll me do a it. lot. I'll do it every day. I'll it's do it been, every day. You know, two weeks. You know, I was on the bar with you guys for that first week, and then this week. Uh, no, last week, two weeks. Yeah, 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 last week. Um, and then this week with you, with you, I was when you proposed it. I was pretty uh, excited. Um, unfortunately, I will be traveling Wednesday. Um, hey, it's all good. House. You can do stream yard on your phone. <laughs> yeah, I ain't getting no signal in the backwoods where I'm at, bro. Nah. I know, I'm just joking. I'm joking. But, uh, no, it's all good. It's, like it's, I said, uh, you know, it's holidays, and especially I'm gonna have company. 
uh, starting tomorrow. So uh, I'll still be doing my work because hey, I still got to sell barbecue sauce. Um, but uh, we'll do what we can for folks. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna launch that sh- the little that little turkey uh, deal. It'll it's not gonna be a whole hour. It'll probably be maybe 15, 20 minutes. It's just a little you know holiday thing um, for Thanksgiving. Hope it'll help some folks make some good turkeys. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, like you said, uh, whatever format this wants to be, I mean, we float around a decent bit. We kind of centered around, uh, you know, a little bit more cooking because that's what me and you kind of like to do. Yeah, know? and like I said, there's no uh, you know, a formal format, good. but if you guys want to talk about some stuff, you can definitely send Web a message, me a message. Um, that's why I don't have my name as Sauce Boss on here. I put up a... Uh, Cat Daddy, because my name is Felix, so it's kind of one of those things. And I'm a dad, and the ladies call me Daddy. But anyway, <laughs> I, had some th- I, had this, I had some things written down, you know, but we didn't even we went into like maybe two of those just organically. That was a thing, yeah. You know, like it. You know, we we were we're lining up some other people. If this turns into a, th- a thing, I mean, um, maybe sort of. Kind of other veterans with different perspectives, and uh, we'll see. And if it turns into a thing, it turns into a thing. It's up to Felix and the producers, and we'll see. So, you guys have a great night. Love you all, and peace. This is the Sauce Boss Cat Daddy signing off from the Black Hills. W from Mobile, Alabama.